started. Hello everyone, welcome to State of the Realm, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast. This week, I am tired as hell and it's gonna show. It has been a crazy early access, both on the good side and unfortunately on the bad side. I hope you've got your cold steel ready for this show because I'm sure that there are gonna be many a meme. Anyway, I am one of your hosts, Michael, Mr. Happy Pope. Of course, joining me is Sly, aka Sly the Fox, aka Sly, aka Gray Fox, aka you my boy Blue. How you doing? I'm doing good. This is actually, you know, in terms of an expansion, this is a good day. You know why? Why? Because I actually got my CE on fucking Oh, high. you didn't get it in the middle of the show. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm proud of you. Yeah, and no, be, pa- oh, all right. be proud of UPS. <laughs> yes, let me let me let me pat them on the back. Okay. Please. All right, and uh, we wanted to have multiple guests on the show today, but unfortunately, I was so busy that uh, I didn't check far enough in advance to try and get more than one. So we do, we only have Ethos, unfortunately. Hey guys, we wanted to get some good guests for today's show, but, but we got uh, Ethos instead. We got Ethos instead. So. Listen, that's what you get for asking me about Blitzball right before the start of the show, after I've had two shots of tequila. All right, you love it. You love it. Okay, this is going to be an interesting show. Well, it is so going to be an interesting. Have they cold steel ready? So, I, so we'll go over that in a little bit because that's obviously okay. we can't get around that being a talking point. I think everybody knew it before that's, I even said. I mean, yeah, I guess we have to. Though. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, it's it's going to be a thing. It's 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 going to be right up there with ten seventeens back in two point launch. If you guys remember, oh, that. Uh, uh, Sly wasn't around for that actually, so we might have to educate him about it. So, early access has been. A, we're done. It's launch day. We are doing the show on launch day for Stormblood. And like I said in the beginning, there's been some ups, there's been some downs, Uh, the job changes, we've been getting a lot of opinions, power rankings, things like that for the past few days. So we're going to go over all that, but I just want everyone watching the show to know this is going to be a spoiler-free episode. The first spoiler cast, Ethis, you're going to be hearing about this too, is in two weeks, the day Omega Normal launches, and will not include the Omega Normal story discussion. Sly looks like he wants, first of all, Ethis can't even talk about Spoilers, because he's not done with the story yet. He's taking his time. Well, I've seen more of the story than you have, Mister. You Skip actually the have. I'm watching up. them on. Th- I'm watching them on Thursday. I already planned it. Oh, yeah. I'm watching yeah. them all on Thursday. Well, there will be a test, so I know yeah. there will be. So it's gonna, and you're gonna end up testing me on like the cutscenes that are like part of the quest dialogue, and not the cutscenes themselves. So, barring all the issues, before we get into specifics. How has your early access been? Both of you, let's start with Sly, since I literally haven't heard from him in like a week and a half. Um, if I were to give it a ranking from 1 to 10, 8.5 in terms of experience. In terms of experience. Is that including the launch problems, or is that excluding the launch problems? Including. Okay, that's important. Um, Ethis, what about you? How has your early access been? You don't have to give it a power ranking uh, per se, but uh, just, you know, how was it? No, I'm not. I'm not good at ratings, but I think I think it was great. I've had an absolute blast. I mean, I had the the problems that you know everyone else had, uh, day one at least, with you know having trouble getting into instances, and I was getting like a lot of disconnects and coming back in with queues of sort of four or five thousand players. Like I was I was doing twelve hour streams, and about half of them I was actually playing like Elder Scrolls Legends in the corner waiting for the queue. <laughs> at least you had a plan. That's the important thing. Yeah, well, had a plan. Um. But uh, oh, after... by the way, I have the wrong overlay. I'm gonna fix that while you're talking. It says okay, over. Well. It says overlay ethics, but it got mixed okay. up with the other one. So, um, yeah, even even considering all that, I mean, it's it's about what your expectations are going into early access, I guess. And people that haven't experienced early access for Final Fantasy XIV or for an MMO before um, might have been like a little bit surprised by. You know, the way things went and the way things were handled or whatever. But thinking back to Heaven's Ward Early Access or Realm Reborn Early Access, it was um, it was no more like 
you know, jarring or or jolting than either of those. And uh, uh, you and I might have different opinions. Yeah, on that. yeah, I, I might have a different opinion, as, um, especially as someone who was around for two, one point oh, two point oh, and three point oh. I just feel like the the vast majority. I think we're a lot more jaded, even ones who have experienced past. I think the, the, the vast majority of people were more jaded. I just think yeah. that maybe their memories are not so great, to be honest. All right. Well, well, I think that's actually the first thing we have to talk about while I'm still trying to find I agree. an overlay for some yeah. reason. I just uh, I can't find it for some reason. Dude, um, it's fine. People people know I am. It's all right. I mean, nobody <laughs> nobody knows who you are. Ah, here it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, nobody knows who you are. So I think that's the first thing we have to talk about. It's clearly the hottest topic when it comes to early access, and it was the experience yeah, yeah. most people had for the first 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So I think most people who have played MMOs have kind of come to expect this, minus a few mm -hmm. select launches. Uh, honestly, Heaven's mm -hmm. Word comes to mind, and Legion for World of Warcraft come to mind as two very smooth MMO launches, or expansion launches in a sense. However, our, exp our early access, which for all intensive purposes, is definitely a launch. I'm not going to mm -hmm. say it's not launch. I don't, I don't believe that. Was not good in terms of connection and stability and all the other problems that came with it. Mm -hmm. There were frequent issues, specifically with one NPC, so early on it makes you wonder, maybe they shouldn't have done an instance that was seven minutes long this early into the main scenario. Mm-hmm. Our buddy Raubon had a quest called uh, Best Served with Cold Steel. And it did not work for the vast majority of players for, I'd say until about Sunday at 5 a.m. was about the time that it started stabilizing on the North American servers, at the very least. Mm -hmm. And it has caused a number of jokes, memes, uh, hatred towards people who have actually who made it past that point in some regard. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, I think the first thing we need to do is talk about our individual experiences with Cold mm -hmm. Steel because that is it is going to be a meme that is infamous for a very, very long time. So I actually don't know what either of your experiences are because I've had this 24-7 thing going on. So mm -hmm. Ethis, I yeah. want you to tell me first, what was your experience with Cold Steel? Uh, on Elemental, it was not that big a deal. We were we were having trouble for the first twelve hours, um, and what I personally did is I I got up to it. I had some trouble getting in. I had a lot of other people having trouble getting in on on various worlds and across various data centers. So I went, all right, fine, I'll just leave it for a little bit. Hey, guess what? There's all of this other content. You know, the game that that's launched here is just the main scenario quest. I'm gonna go unlock Samurai, and I played samurai for for that stream and then the next day i went in and it was fine uh, i got through ravon i got through pippin i know the problems on elemental were resolved much faster were not nearly as severe as they were on any of the north american you guys also centers. do have three data centers which does help technically because you're on the japanese yeah, data yeah, center, yeah exactly it does help. We, do, we, we have more data centers uh across uh, a, a population which is more or less equivalent so we're nowhere near as uh, as overpopulated and, and i think that's that's a big issue that's come out of this is like well you know particularly before next launch it seems like maybe another uh, north american data center would be in order um but uh in any case i in in my from my perspective the main problem people were having is that they got up to the quest and they couldn't get in and they kept trying and they were sitting there spamming it for you know eight hours 12 hours 24 hours um, and not uh, just 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 slamming their head against the wall, you know what I mean? Not not going off and doing something else, not taking a break, not not saying like, oh, okay, well, I'll come back to it in like twelve hours or whatever. Um, so I feel like a lot of the a lot of the salts and the vitriol towards that is kind of um, uh, self perpetuated in a way because no one you didn't you didn't have to sit there for eight hours getting the same NPC over and over and over. Like, I get it. You want to get to the new areas. You want to proceed with the main scenario quest. But I remember in the launch of Heaven's Ward, there was emergency maintenance like four times in the first two days. They were constantly pulling the servers down. People were really, really salty about that. And I've been hearing people saying at the moment, like, oh, I would have preferred they did that because then I wouldn't have to stand there and keep trying to spam. And it's like, well, you didn't have to stand there and keep trying to spam. It. They've, been, they've been resolving the issues without having to pull the servers down, um, which I think is fantastic. 
Um, and I think it's better than what they were doing for the Heavens World launch, at least from, from my perspective on, uh, on Elemental. But I, I just can't help but feel like if you need someone else to pull the servers for you before you have the self-discipline to like step away from this thing that's obviously not working and do something else for a little while, that's, that's, I, I feel like that's kind of strange. Now, before I let Sly go, you're talking about your experiences from the Elemental Data Center, right? Yes, of course. Okay, yes. let's clarify that. Because on the North American Data Center, both of them, it wasn't just that you couldn't do Rob Bond. That was the big stop, stopping point mm -hmm. for people with the mm -hmm. main scenario. But any solo instance generally mm -hmm. had similar results. Rob Bond would just constantly kick you out. But even sometimes mm -hmm. when you made it in, you get 90 k kicked off yeah. the server. And so people would go to unlock Samurai and Red Mage. They'd get it. And then they'd go to do the first quest. Guess what happens? Kicked out. Granted, nothing to unlock on the first quest. You only got abilities mm -hmm. from 60 and 70. But mm -hmm. getting kicked off and then having to deal with the queue times and yeah, anywhere. that kind of sucked. And I, I got I got disconnects um, quite regularly on the first couple of days, and coming back into queues of like four thousand, five thousand people and having to sit in queue for an hour or two was frustrating. But again, it's like those those expectations you sort of carry with you going into an early access uh, inevitably, you know, colors your your experience of it. And if you go in expecting things to run smoothly and to not have queues and to, you know, get through things and not have problems and not get dis disconnects, then you're going to have a bad time. Okay, we'll come back to that because I want to give Sly the opportunity to talk. I had people in my stream telling me he did have pro uh, problems with it, but I don't know mm -hmm. to the what extent. So, uh, Sly, how was your experience with Cold Steel? Not bad. Again, there were a lot of people who had it worse than me. Um, I think I spent about two and a half hours spamming it just to try to get in. Okay. And mm -hmm. and after that, I pretty much got in. And um, other than that, I really didn't experience any kind of disconnection issues until about last night when I was trying to do one more dungeon to get into uh, to get to level seventy. So. Oh no! I think my experience, connection-wise, was was pretty good. Can't really complain. So Sly, mm -hmm. I concur. From when I met the NPC to when I got through, it was about three hours. I mm -hmm. realized that not a single person was getting through. It wasn't even just a few select people. They had just literally instant servers weren't working on North America. Mm -hmm. And so I left and I did fates until I was almost level sixty-two. And then as soon as somebody in my chat said, "Oh my God, I made it." I immediately went there and in about six mm -hmm. tries got through. I kept seeing messages like that or like people in my link shells saying, oh, I got through mm -hmm. like maybe about an hour in when I was spamming it. And I'm like, well, OK, it's possible. So I went back, spammed it, spammed it a little bit, uh, went to do the fate that was right there, that, that was right next to it. That everybody pretty much did in between spamming it. Uh, and then went back and spammed it some more and got in. So, did you see people making a, a physical queue on? It on didn't the, work uh, very well on Gilgamesh. Well, that's the thing is I, that I was trying to explain to people because people were making a queue right, and they were mm -hmm. flaming people that were ignoring the queue. And I was mm -hmm. trying to explain to people in my link shows in my FC that hey, this this is only this would only work if you had across all three instances mm -hmm. across all uh, the servers on the data center it across all of the servers not only on your data center, but on the data centers that share, that share the server that hosts the single player instance, which for North America is both of the data centers. Yeah. So if you had everyone in every instance on every world across both data centers observing this queue, then hey, maybe you might have gone through, but it was, it was ridiculous. It was really silly. So the big thing here, Sly, I don't know if you've seen this, but as I was posting videos to YouTube of the content I was able to reach because I got through early, mm -hmm. I got massive amounts of hatred. Incredible amounts of hatred. What? Ha wait, wait, wait. Hashtag, wait, wait. 
is it hashtag streamer privilege? Is yes. that what everybody was saying? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. People, yep. people same... honestly thought that you were being given some sort of all of us because we mo- a lot of streamers made it through. You know, Miz made it through, Zeno yep. made it through, I made it through, Sly made it through, you made it through. Although you waited till the next day and JP data centers yeah. had it a bit easier. Yeah. Uh, but then you have people like Mary who actually yeah. took pretty much until Sunday, I think, to get through. Yeah. Yeah. And you have uh, Square Enix was sponsoring some streams that day, and they didn't make it through for like ten hours plus. Well, a couple of them rage quit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Towley uh, I think took three days to make it through. Didn't JP like rage quit halfway through his sponsored stream because he was just like, "No, fuck it, this is ridiculous." Yeah, and then he came back at like, um, yeah. I think it was about nine p.m. Pacific mm-hmm. that night, and mm-hmm. then he tried it for like an hour and got through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's there's uh, there's a couple of things I want to say about that. Firstly, I I don't know what the wisdom in doing it, it sponsored streams in early access is if you're expecting early access to be unstable. It probably mm-hmm. would have been much smarter, at least you know from my you know limited perspective. It seems like it would have been much smarter to have the sponsored stream as like today and tomorrow rather than on the 16th for start. Agreed. Um, secondly, I feel like. Um, after all the feedback, and, and this is something that they probably should have picked up from, you know, the Realm Reborn uh, early access, to be honest, is, is when you offer early access as like a pre-order bonus or whatever, you really ought to have a very, very clear disclaimer describing what the early access experience is going to be. So people know what they're uh, opting in for. So the, when you do get this, this backlash, there's something that you can point at and say, well, hey, no, we did actually tell you that there was going to be disconnects, that there were going to be, uh, you know, problems with, um, uh, uh, problems with uh, uh, duties, problems with servers. Um, and if they made that clear from the start to people, then people wouldn't really have so much of a leg to stand when it comes. Like, like, like as, as Mike was saying, the way they treated it is effectively launch day. Mm-hmm. And that's not what early access should be. And that's not how they treat early access. Like internally, they think of it as like a, a, a service stress test. Which like they, they shouldn't, mar- by the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which they shouldn't. But if they market it and they promote it, like it's um like it's launch day which they effectively did from again from my perspective but then still have these expectations of it being a stress test it's not uh, i i feel like some sort of disclaimer would definitely be on order and and, and, I, and i feel like a disclaimer would have done an awful lot to kind of mitigate um a lot of the the problems that people have been having now i can agree with you a little bit mm-hmm. but my thing is for pretty much a lot of us who have been playing this game some since 1.0, mm-hmm. it's not their first rodeo. It's like people kind of know this to be expected, know some things are expected when you deal with early access and, you know, the beginning mm-hmm. of an expansion. So mm-hmm. like to go in, I mean, to go in optimistic is not bad, mm-hmm. but have a, at least have a modicum of realism in realizing that, you know, things will go wrong, you know, Servers will be pretty much heavy on the first day. Everybody's trying to get yeah. in. It's the floodgates. Like, yeah. it's open and day. Yeah. Um, you, you can't just go in thinking everything will work. I mean, if it does, good for you. Perfect. Mm-hmm. You got through. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't, just don't fucking rage at that point because you, you kind of knew. Yeah. You, you've done this before. Yeah, and certainly don't do things like send the community team uh, death threats and tell them that they should kill themselves. Um, because there's been a lot of that. Yeah, I know, I know Shannon and, uh, and Matt have both been getting a lot of that kind of bullshit, which is disgusting. Um, there's been a lot of people like asking for Yoshida to step down and it's like, guys, come on, come the fuck on. Um, I, I, I can't help but feel like there's, there's only so much you can prepare for an MMO launch. There, there can be nothing more stressful, nothing more mm-hmm. difficult than like a major MMO launch like this. And when things do go smoothly, like they did for Legion, for example, I can't help but feel like that's kind of a Hail Mary. Like they just kind of landed on their feet, you know? Because you can only prepare so much. Well, they also had 12 years to get it right. But right, but so, they've also gone wrong a lot of times in that 12 years. What? So what yeah, actually I, had, I, World of Darkness actually had the exact same problem. It had an NPC only one person mm-hmm. could talk to at a time and people had mm-hmm. to wait to get through it. 
Mm-hmm. Although theirs didn't involve 90Ks and duty finder breaking and, and, and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So we had it worse, in my opinion. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, like, I, I think Legion was as much of, as them just, like, landing on their feet as it was, like, being, you know, more prepared or whatever. Because I don't see how they could have been better prepared. You're right that maybe not having a single play instance that is that long, like, that soon into the main scenario. Um, or, I or said having... World of Darkness, by the way. That's the 24-7 talking. Warlords of Draenor. Draenor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We know what you meant. I know, um, yeah. Like, like I, I agree with that, but at the same time, it's like, uh, they fixed it really quickly. Like, they fixed it before the official... Here's, here's what I've been telling to people. If, mm-hmm. if you're still getting these problems, if, you still, if on the 20th, you still have to sit and wait for eight hours before you can get in that instance, then that's messed up because this is launched as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. But they did treat the 16th like launch day, and I think that was a mistake. You know what? I'm sure that the main reason we had congestion was actually the 30,000 people who were given 30 days free at WrestleMania all logging in on the 16th. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure they did. Yeah. yeah that, had to be, that had to be it. It couldn't be anything else. How many, how many people do you think, like across all the data centers and all the worlds, were, were trying to get in on the 16th? It must I, have been over a million. I mean, yeah. He's, it was definitely over a million. Um, but to, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even guess. So so wait, Haps, did did I hear you right? And you're saying and saying that you're blaming this on Austin Creed and the no, WWE. No, I'm not bl- blaming it on Austin Creed. They put they gave everyone at WrestleMania a free 30 days. Every single person. Yeah, but how many people redeemed that? All of them, and they all tried to get through Cold Steel. I promise. <laughs> they thought it was uh, Stone Cold Steel, and they were like, "Man, I got to get in there." <laughs> I didn't bring that. Well, guys, for once, it's not me, okay? Guys, guys, you're fucking welcome. <laughs> and for once, I wasn't the gift. one making the joke, okay? That's a gift from me to you. Uh, you can you can use that on your friends. Spider, Spider-Man rule, everyone gets one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's well, your I, one. I get, a, I get a few hundred, apparently, but he gets one. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On that note, so Cold Steel was a problem. You know, people mm-hmm. were getting kicked off the servers. People were then getting stuck in instances. The next big one, because we're going to cover the problems first before we talk about the content. Mm-hmm. Susano. There was well, well, well. Did you mention did you mention Pippin's wild ride in that? Well, you he mentioned yeah. Pippin. I don't need. Yeah, that was that was implied. <laughs> yeah, okay. Pippin's implied because people got past Cold Steel like, yeah. And then you oh get Pippin's fuck! Wild ride. Yeah. <laughs> Three quests later, they're like. <laughs> so the next yeah, major so issue Kanoi. was susano mm-hmm. so on the second day a glitch popped up with susano in which people who were exiting the instance had a chance mm-hmm. to have their character lost in like a in like a neutral zone basically when your character is being transferred from zone to zone there's like a void of data or space between that and people's characters are getting stuck in that void yeah, they just got an early preview of the interdimensional rift. That, I hope that's not a mechanic there. That's great. Yeah. Um, and while eventually the community came up with a, a fix for it, which was mm-hmm. impressive as all hell, have a, have a, go log in on another um, IP address. It was generally a big thing. You could tether to your phone. You could go to a friend's house and log in if they had a computer, or you could bring mm-hmm. like a laptop. Or, or you could just have a friend mm-hmm. you know, log in for you. You know, something like that. Any of those would have fixed it. But what caused the problem, apparently, was they made a change that when you enter and exit an instance, you're technically, an emote is still registered, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that emote was causing a lot of people trouble. And at first I was thinking in my head, what are the odds of people emoting when they zone in? Then I remember pretty much every YouTube video I've ever seen of people going into instances in Final Fantasy XIV, and all of a sudden my chat goes, oh, thank God you told me that. I was literally emote. I was literally doing slash dance waiting for the queue when you oh. told me that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like any, any persistent emote, man. Yeah. And, that, uh, that, I feel like that should have been tested. I mean, are you really thinking of testing an instance? Like, what? Ha- I wonder what happens. If I'm doing the Manderville when well, I zone into Susano. It's a new feature having having emotes persist uh, 
when you like like through the instance and after you come out of the instance again that's a new feature it's something that they should have tested for like every single instance another big one is swimming and floating on the water oh really yes Just floating on the water yes right again like they 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 should have been testing that surely for like every single but it's certainly every new instance right I'm, Wait, I'm floating here. you you count floating as persistent well the floor you just float on your back yeah yeah oh okay. yeah apparently that counts yeah so i mean emotes i mean that was another huge issue people were literally at that point they had gotten past cold steel they've gotten past pippin they had mm -hmm. made it at least through the first dungeon a bunch of other main scenario quests with solo instances they were afraid to get 90k out of mm -hmm. and finally you come to susano the first primal and you're afraid to go in. I just went in. And it's the That's only correct. instance where that happens. because right. and, it, and the instance itself spits you out underwater at that. So you're swimming when it spits you out. So you're swimming when mm -hmm. you go in. You're spinning. Yeah. It, uh, mm. Yeah. It was a bit of a problem. So. I don't know. That's a weird one. I just wanted yeah, to bring was... it up. It's hard to really get thoughts on it. Because it's just laugh. It's kind of funny in a sense when you think about what caused it. It's mm -hmm. not funny when you think about the, the strife people went through. Being told, it would be days before it was fixed. Well, there were a few people that managed to go to GMs and were just like, hey, you need to send me to my return point. And basically, if they kept nagging them, they got that done. But the thing is that the GMs had like something like 30 or 40,000 tickets in their queue. And there's across like North America and Europe, there were like probably two dozen GMs on GE. <laughs> so there's no way. There's no way. There was a, yeah, well, there was a way for some people. <laughs> Apparently. So those are just, those are, those are the most major issues that, that plagued mm -hmm. our early access. I do want to say if anyone did get stuck in Cold Steel, there were a lot of memes. It might have been hard to watch them happen. You know, I saw, you know, ARR, a realm rebond, which I, I immediately tweeted after I saw somebody say it. A, a, a realm, a realm, a realm real bond. Was, was <laughs> I beat Rob Bond. Yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. one of those, by the way. Oh, God. I'm going to wear it to my, to the next, <laughs> to, to the next interview. Yeah. Yeah. That was one, um, the main scenario quest stole Rob Bond's arm. So now he's stealing the main scenario quest. Yeah. That was another really common one. Uh, what are some, what are some other cold steel memes? Arm of the arm of the father and arm of the yeah. son. They thought Alexander yeah. followed us with both yeah. fucking Rob Bond and Pippin. <laughs> that was, that was the father, the son and the Holy spirit referring to the big, the three major, uh, problems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What was, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to, th there was, there was literally there was the guide for Raubon Savage. Mm -hmm. All of my comments yes. for the first three days on all my YouTube videos were stop making guides for dungeons and tell me how to get past Raubon. Make a guide for Raubon. <laughs> um, cock blocked by the bull of all amigo. There were people offering carries through the Raubon instance for like 20 mil. Leshy, leshy <laughs> mechanics. That one leshy that keeps aggroing people while they're fucking there. <laughs> <laughs> that that lets or, you you can you, you can skip soar but you can't skip Raubon. <laughs> there were so many like this this is l as legendary as a meme as you can probably get as I, fucked up as it was for everyone. I think I think in, in a couple of weeks we're all gonna look back and laugh at it. I'm laughing at it already we're now already, that people are making it out. At it. Yeah. Yeah. Jet fuel, I think, I think jet fuel can't melt melt cold steel. That was... <laughs> oh people, people are getting through it now, though, right? It's a oh yeah, it's, it's since yeah. technical launch date and it's all fixed. Yeah, since Sunday at about five a.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. I noticed a bunch of people like everyone stopped having issues with it. Like some mm -hmm. people still did, like very few, but even mm -hmm. they made it through with some persistence. Because when I was making the argument of saying, "Well, it's not technically launch day," and you know, if it's still happening on launch day, then I'll have a problem with it, and I'll think it's a big deal, or whatever. And people were saying, "Oh no, it's definitely still going to be happening on launch day. Well, it's irreparably broken. It's going to be happening for weeks." So I'm glad. I'm glad I'm right about that. I'm glad I'm right about that. My, my favorite one Let's was the, the people taxiing people over the wall that you couldn't pass because of the main scenario to get them uh -huh. to like the ether currents and the fucking <laughs> teleport point mm -hmm. so they could at least do the level 67 fates while they were leveling waiting for it to work. <sighs> or they could gather materials like leveling their minor and botanist and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Actually, speaking speaking of gathering, Mary made a really, really good point. I think it was last night or the night before, um, which is something that I, I hadn't considered and was probably perhaps one of the more significant uh, repercussions of all this is that the people that got through had a massive head start, a massive monopoly yes. on the market boards for about yeah. 40 hours. Yeah. Which is sick. That was a big one. Um, that's why. That's why eventually, uh, ferrying over the wall, people were charging 100k to ferry over the wall. Some people were doing it for free. Great on them. Mm, but some yeah. people were charging 100k to ferry people over the walls that were uh, restricted by the main scenario, so they could get yeah. to the end game materials. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad that they had the foresight not to uh, have Shiragane uh, housing unlocked, because could you have imagined if that if that acted as a gate for housing? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> think about that. Do you think there's a way to kind of rectify the, um, I guess you can say, imbalance now from the people who have got who were ahead? Yeah, would they? I think, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything. The mo most they're going to do maybe is compensate people a day or two of, of game time, and that's it, if anything. But uh, no, mm -hmm. they can't compensate anything else. And if people on all the people that went to all the new servers, people that make characters on all the new servers, getting all the free gill and extra free yeah. times, yeah, like. Well, which I think is great, by the way. The free yeah. guild, the free experience, all that for people moving around. It's it's great, but at the same time, if you went to the new server just on that situation alone, still the same data center. You're you're yeah. kind of fucked, and yeah. you know, <laughs> and you're there for in, ninety days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've had people do that, and I'm like, well, I'll see. So you in a three decision months. you should make lightly, you know? Yeah. You want to know something funny? European data mm -hmm. center, they made a new server called Omega. Mm -hmm. That Omega had a 17,000 player queue <laughs> because European players were transferring over to Oh, everyone was transferring to it thinking that it was going to be. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and so they made another one called Louis Soi. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that is terrible. That is terrible. It had a 17,000 thousand player queue not even well 1.7 17 thousand player queue so none none of us none of us are, are server engineers so obviously you know our opinions don't really hold any more water than anyone else's would but what what would you guys do differently like how, how do you think maybe this could be rectified Alloc uh, allocate less instant servers to the level level 65 to 70 stuff and allocate more mm. instant servers to the low level mm -hmm. stuff for the first day or two. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I think they definitely need to have like one or, or a couple of servers, like a dedicated to each data center, for instance, servers. Yeah. Just stuff like this. Um, another thing is we don't put a fucking quest before at least the first dungeon or that locks you out of like the second main city or like they're, they, you were locked out of so much by getting stuck on that quest. It was yeah i i mean that's true but at the same time people that thought that there was nothing else that they could do were wrong they could have been unlocking the new jobs and doing that stuff yeah but people do can think this, really do that so let's talk let's go yeah do you think this was that sacrifice of uh some of the budget i mean mind you we had like a larger budget no, no i literally so, think they ju they just they couldn't handle the volume it was yeah. so early on. Even if they, honestly, even if they had allocated more instances, the way it went is still the way it was going to go. It just would have went faster. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. It didn't help so, that the Red Mage and Samurai Quest both had instanced fights right at level 50 at, as well. To be fair, they were really, really fun instances. That's not a good excuse. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of jobs had instances at 60. Uh, Goon didn't. Um, Warrior did, like you said, Samurai Red Mage. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of why I slipped through the cracks a little bit as well because I didn't have to deal with the instance in term terms of my job. Yeah, that definitely helps when you don't have to deal with mm -hmm. any of the instances for because I don't, I don't know about you guys for my job quest, I didn't bother with any of them on two jobs now until 70 because there's you don't get mm -hmm. anything from them other than story until max mm -hmm. level. For yeah, Red Mage right. and Samurai, you get a new ability at 60. But still, that's you know, for every other job, there's nothing mm -hmm. else. It's literally you don't have to do them till seventy. Um, right. So what was what was another thing I was going to bring up? Um, shit, I forgot. There was there was something else that I wanted to bring up and something that I, I had a, an issue with their them design wise. Right. 
It just slipped my mind. I, 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 I'll probably have to. I'll probably have to come back to it. Oh, well, there. Why it is. Are you thinking that? You could it. could they add a system that when you click on the solo instance, it places you in a queue? In a queue. Yeah, and I don't see why. Kind of like, like, like what they did with um the Jimmy servers themselves. Yeah. 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 I don't see why they couldn't have have done that. But the, but the thing is, like, then you'd get. Uh, a queue popping up saying like you will be able to enter this duty in eight hours and you go oh well <laughs> at least you can walk That's away because be. you can't disconnect from the server while interacting with an npc <laughs> oh so you just leave yourself there interacting with an npc and go and have a sleep <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> that's what people should have been doing. Oh, anyway yeah i i agree i agree with that 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 is something that would absolutely help um yeah, but I, I still think the main thing for me in terms of like play feedback, in terms of people, it seems so many people were not expecting there to be problems and they thought that they would just like go in and everything would be fine. And I, I hate to say that a lot of, uh, because I, I don't want to like, um, I don't want to put like a, a whole bunch of people in the same box, but there are a lot of people that I feel were just acting really entitled. And you're right, like you've spent the money. So in a way, like, you know, you are entitled to like a certain amount of service or whatever. But the thing is, like, there, there are a lot of people that thought that this was, uh, you know, the devs not working hard enough or not having prepared hard enough or just like not doing anything about it. And every single person at Square Enix probably went like 36 hours without sleep over launch trying to get this stuff resolved. And when you're just being so spiteful, um, in, you know, social media on the official forums and stuff like that. It, it's just like, I, I, I can't help but feel like maybe there's something that Square Enix could have done to soften that blow and uh, I guess temper people's expectations or, or um, like I say, some sort of disclaimer or something would, it, would have been great. Right. Something they could have pointed to and been like, well, hey, look, we did, we did warn you. Uh, it's, I've just, I gotta say like my, my, my faith in the community over the last couple of days has taken a bit of a hit. I gotta say like, I'm, I'm really, and again, I don't want to make it like a blanket thing, but I'm really disappointed in, uh, in a lot of the, the bullshit that's been coming out of the community in the last couple of days. Yeah. Okay. I think we've covered Colt Steel long enough. All right. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Let's get to the good stuff. So now let's talk about Stormlight. Again, reminder, spoiler free. Ethis hasn't even finished the main scenario. So the one person who people think wants to talk about the story the most doesn't have a complete picture yet. So don't be afraid. I'm probably got more of a picture than you do, man. Yeah. I would, well, yeah. I would, I would like to say this real quick, just as a reminder to you two, as a reminder to everyone in the chat. There are three instances I do not want us to state by name. There is the level 67 main scenario dungeon. There's the first level 70 main scenario dungeon. Mm. And there is the final trial of the main scenario quest. We will not mention these instances by name. We will not mention the bosses by name. Enjoy them when you get to them. Trust me. So you the will. other two level 70 dungeons? Yeah, the other two level 70, I, I don't care. Because... Okay. Because, yeah, their locations are kind of like, huh? But as soon as you get there on your map, you kind of know that there's something going on there. Like, those, right. those aren't that big of a surprise because you can see the dungeon entrance on your map. Actually, the level 70 right. main scenario quest, until I finished the quest before it, it didn't even appear on my map. That's how much, like, Square Enix tried to prevent you knowing that was what you were going to be doing. Mm. So, mm. Um, keep that in mind. You'll be, when you get there, you'll be like, oh, okay. So I'm going to give you a TLDR. This, other than the launch problems, this is infinitely better than Heaven's Word. For a Agreed. launch. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Or oh, yeah. for content, for, for quality of content. Now, let's go into some specifics without spoilers. Okay. I like these zones better. They're beautiful. Yes. E even like even the fringes place. and the peaks, which are both yeah. mountainous areas... Mm -hmm. I am. I I care so much more about them than I did the four lands and the sea of clouds. And mm -hmm. I was not impressed by the the sea of clouds was fun to fly through, but un until I could fly, I hated that zone. Mm -hmm. so one I, thing I love. Yeah, okay, one thing I love about the zones 
is in comparison to Heaven's Ward, where when we got into a zone in, in Stormblood, like even without flying, they look amazing. And then when you actually are able to fly, they look even better. And another thing that I felt like Heaven's Ward kind of relied on in terms of making a zone feel vast, and these zones feel vaster than the ones in Heaven's Ward, is the fact that they don't, they're not tiered in, in terms of the vertical axis like the zones mm -hmm. in, in Heaven's Ward are. It's just you have pretty much one plane. You have area, you have some areas that you will need to reach by flying. But other than that, it's just on one kind of vertical axis, whereas, you know, you have sea of clouds and you have to fly to this tier and then fly to an even higher tier to get to some other places. Yeah, I just thought, like, brilliant on the devs for making the zones feel a little bit, a little bit more vast without mm -hmm. having to rely on that vertical. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. They, they felt they felt a lot. They felt like real places, you know, mm -hmm. they felt a lot more um, organic. They felt a lot more natural. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first thing I noticed with that was was obviously Kugani. Like it feels like a real city. It's 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 very it's very dense. Like it's not um, this just sort of flat map where there's like you know things. Are really, basically, how the Rome Reborn cities feel. And um, uh, then the problem I always had with Ishgard is that it was just big and empty, and there wasn't you know really anything there. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. There's the, the zones like the, the and they're also different, like from each other and from everything else that has been <coughs> in the game as yeah. well. Um, uh, they're, they're just the, the level design, like both in dungeons and in the zones has been just absolutely fantastic. Like the strongest I think I've ever seen in an MMO, to be honest. Yeah, um, I, I agree for the most part. Um, there is one zone that aggravated me and uh mm. sly will know at this you will not ruby the, c the locks okay i have seen the locks there's one thing that aggravates me about the locks i think mm -hmm. i know what it is more than anything is. and it's the it's it the it's their design in the ether currents yes i will not okay. tell you where they are unless unless i'm in the middle but holy shit who the fuck designed the ether currents for the lock. You are an asshole. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I knew some people were, like I, I was talking to Fig about this and, and he loved it how he had to go like go through buildings and like they were really difficult to find. You really had to That's explore. the thing. You have to go through hell and half of Georgia just to get one oh, end to the other. No. <laughs> no, it really wasn't. You'd think right, well, it's great because it, it, it you think it's great because it gets you exploring, but mm -hmm. you're like literally staring at it. You're like how? I get hmm. And then you're like, oh, let me just yeah. let me just go halfway across the map. Yeah. No, not the, even halfway. The entire way across the fucking map. Uh -huh. And then loop back around to come mm -hmm. back. And fucking oh that's not a level God. design problem. That's something that frustrates you for like 45 minutes and then you never think about it again. Every other time I'm you go thinking about it right now, and it's been three days. Every time I fly through that zone, I look at where that ether current was, and I go, you "Forget about that." So good. the Lox is um, such a beautiful zone. You'll it is. About it is. It. The so Lox is. is the Lox is one of the best zones in the game. Yes, yeah. almost all standpoints. It is a. Yeah. You know, it's incredible. But those ether currents are just the worst thing I've ever experienced. Happy, I don't know about you. You probably would have done this, but in the back of my head, I was thinking. I like there was a thought. Maybe I should shout for somebody who has a you know flying mount who's unlocked all the aether currents and everything and just get them to <laughs> ferry me there. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I was really thinking about it. I was some oh, some I people know. in the chat paid for people to ferry them to them. I know that mm -hmm. for a fact. Yeah. So yeah. some if, people if you're making people pay to ferry ferry them places. That's kind of he paid two hundred fifty k. That's ridiculous. So okay, well two hundred fifty k is a drop in the bucket for some people. You know. For some people, sure. Yeah. Okay. But for like five minutes of work. So some people yeah. are pointing out that the hinterlands was somewhat the same, where you had to yeah. not only go through Idleshire and unlock the other half, you yeah, then had to true. loop all the way around. Okay, so here's the thing. When you get to that ether current, you kind of immediately figure out you won't get there till later. Mm -hmm. With the one in the locks, you can get there immediately, but you think it's going to be somewhere nearby that gets you in it. Because right, it right. feels so within reach. The other one doesn't feel within reach. 
This is like, right. it's literally right there. It's got to be somewhere near here, right? And there were a couple of these like that. It wasn't even just one. If I, if There's it was just one, one in particular, though. Yeah, and I think I know which one you're talking about. But if it was just if it was just one in particular, I would have let it slide. I would have been like, you know what? You know, fine. Force me explore. I don't care. But you do this like several times. Yeah, there's another think, there's another one, and I won't say where it is because it's mm -hmm. actually it's a very big spoiler. The name of the mm -hmm. location where it is. I'll just mm -hmm. say it's in the for those who know the southeastern side of the map, near mm -hmm. and near an etherite. That's all I'll say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. You look at it, and you're like, okay, how? <laughs> and by the time you find it, you feel dumb. It's not nearly as mm -hmm. bad as the other one. But I know people that spent, like, 20, 30 minutes on that one also. Even though it's, like, literally, like, if I could just jump and do it at the same time, I could probably get it done. So, Aether Currents were adjusted in, what was it, 3.1 for Heaven's Ward? 3.1, 3.2, something like that? I think 3.2, because I have gone yeah. back and done the adjusted ones, right. which were... Right, and the adjusted ones... I'm much easier. I, I think that the ones in Stormblood are much easier than what they originally were yes. in Heaven's Ward. They're about the mm -hmm. same as what they were after the adjustment in Heaven's Ward. Yeah. And I think that's smart. I think that's good. I think they found like the right balance there. A lot of people are frustrated that we still have to do them, but I, I see I see the value in having to explore these areas and because the thing is like so many people they want to they want to blast through a zone they want to sit with their thumb up their ass in in the Idleshire equivalent for the next three years and they're never going to explore two years. Like, calm down there sorry two years and they're never going to explore you know like eight tenths of the of the game's uh, content and that's that's disappointing and I feel like coercing people to actually go through and realize how beautiful these maps are isn't such a bad thing. I will say uh, one thing about the not in not just in um, terms of aether currents, but in terms of map design, there was one particular area in um, the fringes that I didn't like because it was it's the bottom right hand area. Right, you're talking about the south part of the fringes. Mm -hmm. It's like a one way one way road, so you mm -hmm. go through that, and I think it's called. The yeah, is, there, is, it, is it where the boss fade is? The one that everyone was doing for while they were waiting for Raw Bond, the evil seed? No. No? no. Okay. Mm -mm. But yeah, it's on the southeastern part of the map. And basically, it's a one-way street. You go through it, and you hop down. And you can't really go through it again because it's elevated to the point where you would have to fly to get right. through it. So, so, if you were doing, so if you were doing a quest and you were on the other side of the scabbard and you just mm. you, not, you had to go back i know where this is to, yeah you had to there's go actually back to these, a couple of places like that in the yeah in the fringe. yeah yeah now I, I thought that was kind of you know a little bit less lackluster in terms of map design like having to make you backtrack and go all the way back and then kind of loop around like do a kind of nascar circle just to get around it well i think all in all these zones just were better than heavens were. Yeah. I think the yeah, only probably. the only zone I would argue that I I actually liked in Heaven's Sword was Azus Law because of the story implications and the fact mm -hmm. that it also mm -hmm. as much as it's a pain in the ass going back to do things like hunt and whatnot because it's so big, mm -hmm. it was something that visually you just saw like there's so much to tell about this area. Everything mm -hmm. has a story, everything has a purpose but because it's a this... facility. There's, I mean, like, okay, I agree in as a slide, like, it was very, very, very clear that that was the case. The thing is, every single one of the zones in Stormblood has been like that. Exactly. It just might not, might and not that's be what's good about um, that. Sort of clearer than they could I. Um, like, oh, Nan Krebs Hope, when I, when I actually saw that, I was just like, you know, oh. I've already sort of, sort of marking down areas you're going to quiz me about. Like any, yes. any anything that sounds like the like the steps of Sasamo, yes. anything mm -hmm. like like even hundred throws. I'm surprised you never asked us about like back in Dervanian Forelands. So Did anything I? anything that has a number and mm -hmm. some sort of implied thing, I'm literally mm -hmm. like stalking over it. Like he's gonna fucking ask us about. This. Man, I'm so excited for Nian Krebs Hope to be a dungeon of some sort. Okay, you think it'll be a dungeon? Anything it'll be something. Happen. It'll be something. And anything yeah. could happen. These these zones. The next thing we have to talk about is the music, the track for Stormblood. Oh, it's so good. I will say. Although, okay. No, I, on, I, no, 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 no. I, I want you to go. I want you to go. I want you to go. 
I was I was gonna say like I I'm very upset the fact that I'm hearing the Garland national anthem every time I complete a quest. I'm like, no, no, that's yeah, not that's right. Kind of weird. Oh, that's that's kind, of be, weird. kind of makes me wonder what Xenos hears when he completes a quest, and maybe quest. that's maybe maybe that's why he's so uh, jaded. Maybe he hears like I don't know the Mogul Mog theme or something. He's like, fuck <laughs> these Aorsians. Oh, oh, I hate them. But isn't that isn't that kind of messed up? It's it's sort of this dark irony. We hear the Galan national anthem every time we complete a quest. We're in their territory, man. Well, yes, but it's like this big victorious triumphant, like yes, congratulations, you complete. I'm like, am I am I working for Galamold? <laughs> like the line is literally for Galamold. <coughs> well, I mean. I, t- listen, 5.0 Garlemald is a Gar- Garlands is a race confirmed. All right. I prefer that to the to the the oh, the Lupin, the fairies, the Lupin. They look ridiculous. The Lupin. You had a problem with the Lupin. I don't have a problem. No, I I don't have a problem with the concept of a race mm-hmm. like that. I just think the Lupin look ridiculous. They look like people with with Halloween wolf masks. <laughs> It's like they, there's, hairy there's chest. nothing. That's the thing. There's nothing. Um, there's nothing like uh, bestial about their their body or anything. They're just cures with the fucking Halloween they, wolf. Dude, they have fucking fur on they're their fine. body. Yeah, they got hairy chests. So have I. Everyone's got a fucking hairy, hairy chest. Doesn't make you. <laughs> My love bull doesn't have a hairy chest. I want to be a character <laughs> that has a hairy chest. That'd be sexy I've, as fuck. I've got side burns. What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I got a cough, so you guys are going to hear me. I'm going to mute so they don't have to hear me cough. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with having a race that kind of fits that, that aesthetic. But I feel like the Lupins, is just, they're just kind of silly. I don't know. I'm, I'm, holding, inter- out. I'm holding out for them at 5.0, dude. I'm yeah, I think they probably will be. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in the lore behind the Lupin. Uh, I kind of picked up a few things from certain lines. Now, I want to... Once Eventually. you finish, yeah. Once you finish main story, I want to kind of pick your brain about us. Yeah, we'll talk about it. You know, we'll talk about it. We'll we'll have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So I will say this: the okay. So as as good as some of the music was, the final boss theme, which we've known since the media tour, mm-hmm. which is one of the best themes in the entire game. It literally it feels like Thornton esque, in a sense. Yeah. It feels better than Thornton, yeah. in my opinion. Even for some of the shittiest final bosses. <laughs> That absolutely do not deserve this music. Um, I will say this. If I have to listen to Lakshmi's theme for more than about two and a half minutes, I want to shoot myself in the fucking brain. I gotta say, Lakshmi's theme is definitely one of the... Like, like aesthetically, it's, it's cool. I understand where they're going with it. Mm-hmm. But it's one of the less thrilling primal themes I've heard. <laughs> I, I literally I, I was doing Lakshmi Extreme mm-hmm. and I turned it off and just turned on like house music instead. I just I I, I couldn't put turn it off turn on Ravada's theme. Like I would I would like I'm not a big fan. The, the two primal themes I'm the I am not a fan of are Shiva's second phase, because I don't mm-hmm. like the you whole J pop like, thing. You don't like butt rock? No. It's Shut up. It's not J pop, it's butt rock. It's yeah, awful, is what it is. Um and Ravana's second phase. Like Ravana's second phase I like to make fun of. Ravana's oh, second phase is amazing. What's what's that I hate about? I saw someone make a post recently being like, it's it's a song about a giant insect guy that's gonna <laughs> fucking kill everyone in the world until literally only he, a twenty foot tall insect man, is is left. And it's like, I mean, hey man, it's amazing. It's so uh, cool. Trickling down Small side to Heidelin. Small side oh, note. Take my road stand. It's so good. Small yeah. side note. Susano, uh, Susano and um, Ravana BFFs. Oh, they would get along so well. Oh, yeah. Well, well, Ravana, well here's, the, here's the problem. Ravana skips Ravana. arm day and goes mm-hmm. for leg day. And Susano mm-hmm. skips leg day and goes for arm day. So they yeah. can't go to the gym on the same days. That's well, the Ravana reason. doesn't need arm day because he makes up for it in... By having con- four fucking arms. Yeah. yeah. He's like Goro, except Goro fucking went to arm day. All right. 
Um, but I can. Agree. I think we can agree in, in terms of uh, the two primals. You know, Susano and Lakshmi Susano had the better music. Yeah. Like when I yeah. uh, first did Susano and immediately heard the music, I thought it fit. Sure, it definitely fits. It definitely yeah. fits. Can, can I say that, like, a, a, aside from the primal themes, like all of the Zone music, all the instance music, it's been amazing. Like, yes. Soken, so oh, holy crap, Soken! Like, just he, he just keeps. I don't know how he does it. He just keeps getting better. Not only is he getting more prolific, not only does he does he toss out the equivalent of like two or three albums a year, mm -hmm. uh, which is insane. Like they just keep getting better and better and better. And it's like, oh, dude, oh, oh, it's so good. I can't, I can't not wait until we get the soundtrack. Yes. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I don't know if either of you have the most recent soundtrack, but uh, those, Rise, those Rise lyrics though. <laughs> Oh, the Rise lyrics? The Rise lyrics are, like, even more silly than the lyrics that we were making up for it. <laughs> oh, my God. They're so fucking weird. I've made it, I've made so it a dumb. mission for me to memorize and be able to repeat almost all of them except for the first four, like, lines. Oh, you, you're going you're gonna to learn how to rap the whole thing? Yeah. Easy. We should have a rap battle um, for, for, for the next I probably ASMP. don't want to do it right now because of the tequila. Because it's going to be... <laughs> Because you might get a little too into it. Uh, no, because I'm going to be like, <laughs> like that. Like, like I'm going to trip over my tongue doing it. Because you need a <laughs> lot of focus. You, for the, especially for the 30,000 goblins. Like that entire That's like true. section of the 30,000 goblins is... Uh, That's true. That's what, what, true. So, I want to get Koji to actually rap it because he wrote it. So he better be able to fucking say I'm sure he can. No. no, 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 no. I'm I, sure I, he can. I'm expecting you on stage at the next fan fest to do that. I will. Let's do it. I'll yes, fucking do, do it, it in a heartbeat. Because we were robbed. They didn't perform Rise for us. So no, we were didn't. robbed. We got Locust, but we didn't get Rise. So Locust was very good. Yeah. Literally, the worst part about the official lyrics for Rise is where there's four question marks because even the fucking people who put the <laughs> lyrics on the album didn't know what the fucking words were. <laughs> Koji couldn't remember. Koji <laughs> probably wrote that after like such a bender. <laughs> Yeah, it's super something tagus. Like super yeah. question mark question mark tagus. I don't know. Supercalifragilist. <laughs> no, that's what everyone always says. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, zones beautiful, music beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next thing we have to talk about is the dungeons. Mm -hmm. Without naming two of them beautiful. as a reminder. And you said the 60... 67 and the mm -hmm. 70. It should be obvious where those two are. Yeah, I'm looking at them. Okay, just make it, he's got the game up so he makes sure not to mention them. Because mm -hmm. I think people should see those and their names and their concepts for the first time, like, themselves. As sure. well as the final trial. Sure. Let's just say this. Today I leveled Samurai from 60 to 70 in about 12 hours. It's my second Dang, job dude. to 70. Hmm. <laughs> I did those dungeons. That's all I did. I did dungeon spam. After I hit 61, I just spammed all the Stormblood dungeons. Mm -hmm. The amount of respect I have for these dungeons compared to the Heavensward dungeons is night and fucking day. They're ridiculous. Mm. They're so good. They introduce so many new concepts and themes and mechanics and mm -hmm. like design aspects. And oh my God. So. I kind of want to do them side by side without naming them. And I know Sly is the only one who can join me after 65. Have you done the 65 dungeon yet, Ethos? Or are you just on the 65? No, no, I'm, I know what they are. I know what they all are. But no, I okay. haven't done it. So let's do them side by side. Let's compare them to their immediate counterparts because there were the exact same number of dungeons in Stormblood mm -hmm. as there were in Heavensward, which we expected. Mm -hmm. And at the exact yeah. same points with mm -hmm. odd numbered and then at level 70. Mm -hmm. Dusk Vigil versus what's the exact name the siren song the siren, siren, song, C. The siren song c i fucking hate dusk vigil it is like i would rather get stone vigil in the duty finder I, than get to dusk be fair, vigil. i like i like dusk vigil uh, the first time i went to dusk vigil i was like oh my god this is uh i'm in the the crowns dlc for dark souls 2 this is awesome <laughs> no I, but I definitely agree that Iron Song C is a stronger done. Like, starting a Siren Song C with the NPCs, like, participating in the fight, I'm like, oh, oh. It's also just a better set piece. By the way, uh, F is Jesus on 
what was going to cause us to go to the the siren song sea because you, you don't want to look you know i i i, I hate to brag but f is yeah. jesus on like the whole story yeah at this Jesus on pretty much the whole story. Except you haven't seen the whole story yet, so neither have I. Well, the whole, the whole story that I've seen and that I know of. Yeah. Okay. Um, Siren Song C, first boss, not too impressive, but the second and third boss, mm -hmm. very simple in concept, but mm -hmm. fun. And I think that's mm -hmm. something we're, or that's a thing we'll be saying about the all the bosses as we go through them. Um, and again, the music, the set piece, everything. So what would you say is better, Dusk Vigil or Siren Song C? Siren Song. Hands down. Easy. 63 Dungeon versus Samal. Now, I actually really it's like sweet. the original Samal. It's annoying in the Duty Finder, but the original so Samal for boring. me is... It's... Eh, I don't know. I, I, I like... I still Samal Hard Mode ended up being my favorite dungeon out of the original. Out of the two. So I kind yeah. of appreciate the original Samal a little bit more just because how much I like <coughs> Samal Hard Mode. Fair enough. Fair enough. I compared that to Shisui of the Violet Tide. Shisui... Um, which we got to see at the media tour. So, uh, so at this, you and I were a bit familiar with it beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, again, it just everything about this dungeon to me is just more fun than small. Between the second boss, the third boss is actually probably the least exciting boss of the entire set. Yeah, it's just a cool and reskin, really. Yeah, right. But it has some fun mechanics. Yeah, I won't. I won't. I won't deny that. But mm. the first and the, the the process from going from the trash to the first to the trash to the second boss, more fun. I don't know what mm. it is. Like, I, I think it's because Samal, the first boss was Rafflesia. And I'm yeah. like, you know, but like, so, but literally so much of a joke that the, the boss doesn't even auto attack for like 90% of the fucking fight. Yeah. Um, the second boss, the third boss of Samal wins. I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think Tilman is, is a clear winner here. Tilman's so one of the best, like, uh, dungeon bosses we've had, I think. Of all time. Mm -hmm. Sly? I was about to say, like, a lot of... There were a lot of Tiamat mechanics within Stormblood, if you noticed. Yes. When we get yeah, to one of the, the level... Um, the level 65 dungeon, which is the next one, is, uh, is very mm -hmm. somewhat akin to Tilman. And the entire 65 dungeon has a lot of Tilman's mechanics, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so... We had to pick one, Shisui the Violet Tide, or Samal. Shisui. Yeah, Shisui. I, I, I did love Tiamat as a fight, but Shisui as a dungeon is just it's so beautiful. Again, just like the level design is, is just vastly superior. I'm also a bigger fan of the dungeon, uh, not traps, the dungeon uh, environmental hazards. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. The puffer fish feels a bit more in yeah, place. Yeah. The puffer fish in the beginning of Samal for me are very similar in terms of like feeling natural to the area. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But overall, I mean, especially between the first and the second boss and uh, the, the the Orbans hiding underwater before the first boss. Mm -hmm. I, I just like those things. They're subtle. They're not like, you don't feel like you have to pay too much attention to them, but they're there kind of waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 65 Dungeon, which was one of my favorites for a few different reasons. My favorite, hands down. Um, this one we can give by name because there's no spoilers involved. Bardom's Metal. Um, yep. This is, for me, the, the most interesting because it has a concept I would like to see exercised in other places. Well, you mean Hall of the Novice Part 2? Yes. Literally Hall of no. the Novice Part 2. So, first of all, this is the first dungeon where you start to realize that White Mage might not be trash. Because... I'm sorry, what? Oh, really? You didn't realize that a couple wait, of weeks no, no, ago no, 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 we were no. saying how good it was going to be for Prague? Wait, wait, what? What? Happy, say that again, please. This is the first dungeon where you realize that White Mage might not be trash. Even if you we don't... Have that, even we have that you... last bit in writing, White Mage might not be trash with your signature. And... I didn't say it was going to be trash. I said I needed to see the Those content. Were your exact words. No, I said that... I, saw I, that in writing, I still stand by I don't like Lilies or Confession. I still find them incredibly Oh, neither do I, but White Mage is very strong at the moment. Very strong. Yeah. Okay. So, no, no, no. Just, I just want to get this in, well, in writing, but in exact <laughs> words. Please, please. So, please, the main you. reason why no, no, I no. say this. So, let me explain. If you're going to ask for it in writing, I need the full, I need the fine print, right? So, I need to give All you, right, I'm okay. going to read. So, here's the big thing. This is where you start to see that they upped tank and raid damage considerably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... It's enough, it's damage to a point where you absolutely will be using Cure 1 and Cure 2. 
which then gives the Lily mechanic a bit more power. Obviously, plenary indulgence is um, is uh, not till seventy, so can't really talk. Mm -hmm. But it is a trend that will continue uh, as we go forward, talking about the new dungeons and the new trials. That's you funny. do not fuck about in Bardem's Metal, or you die very, very quickly. I've done the full pulls in this one. It's frightening. <laughs> it's frightening, to a sense. At least for a four-man dungeon, it's way more frightening than anything in Evans Ward. Okay? Yes. That being said, mm -hmm. it's also the bosses in Barnum's Metal. Sly? You gotta start from the beginning. You wanna start? You want, yeah, you wanna start from the beginning? I enjoyed the first boss. I was laughing more. I mean, I was interested in general, but I was laughing more about the environment and what was going on in terms of the environment itself. And when I first saw it, I mean, I saw everything around these around the arena in terms of the, I'm not even going to call them ads, they were just animals. Um, and then, you know, while fighting, I'm just looking off in the distance. And I see something coming off in the distance into the arena. I just, I couldn't help but laugh. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Now let's be perfectly clear why this is the first dungeon that hits that hard. Cause chat is bringing it up. It is, mm -hmm. it does have to do with the way item, item level scaling works going to storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The difference between 270 and 273 is huge. Is way bigger than we anticipated. It is huge. That, <laughs> why'd you have to do that? Ooh. Now, that being said, this is still something we need to pay attention to going into the 67, 69, and the 70 dungeons, and then, of course, Lakshmi and Susano, and something we'll have mm -hmm. to follow more closely when Omega mm -hmm. and Omega Savage come out. Because this is something they work towards even in, back in small hard mode, where we started actually seeing things like tank busters that mattered, for example, yeah, even in true. four man dungeons. Right. So they've been leaning more towards it, but we do have to keep in mind there is that factor about the item level itself uh, mm -hmm. and the way it scales. So the first boss, okay, fun, didn't have any fucking clue what it meant the first time, didn't even realize that it was a distance, there was a distance based mechanic there at first, even though I've seen that mechanic before. Really? I still was just like, well, yeah, it just was in. Well, because I was so close to the boss, I didn't right. see the type of arrow that was there. So I was just like, all right, oh. I'm going to stand <laughs> right here. <laughs> I'm out of it. I'm fine here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm perfectly fine. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> then you get to the second boss, and you're like, why is this not Hall of the Novice or anything else? Like, this, this is what Hall of the Novice should be, not. Hey, just so you know, when there's more than one enemy, you have skills that damage more than one enemy at once. Remember to use them. Or dodge AoEs. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes enemies may spawn, and you need to stop them from spawning. There are interactable objects. No, this is literally like, alright, here's a shit ton of mechanics you can't even fucking fight. And just dodge the mechanics don't be shit this is, isn't this better than hall of the novice is actually like, that's what i'm saying that. why is this not yeah. what hall of the novice was like if you're yeah, gonna right, teach people right, to right, dodge right. aoe's teach them to dodge aoe yeah well i mean that's that's been one of the the huge complaints that we've made um and one of like the rebuttals to the jump potion is like well actually leveling content doesn't teach you how to play your job at all and this doesn't Maybe. either. Let's be clear. You don't learn right. anything about playing your job. In no, this you don't point. learn anything about playing your job. But I mean, in terms of like mechanics and stuff like that, like uh, there, there was previously like nothing really that taught you how to play the game before end game. Where do you think now they're starting to address that a little bit, I suppose? I mean, um, slowly, slowly. Is, is, okay, I guess what I'm asking is, is this dungeon going to be a, a, like a wall or a filter for people who use the jump potion where they're going to have to learn how to play the game before they can proceed. No. No. I mean, it's a, yeah, it is a little bit. It's a why little not? bit, but not completely. Because, they, because they don't know what their buttons do, and, and then nothing's going to save them eventually. And this does this so is the right. opposite of teaching you what your but The only button you know at this point is that Sprint exists, and that you should remember it doesn't cost TP anymore. Yeah. Right, but there's there's no there's no DPS checks. There's, you're, like, you'll still get through it if you can move. Yeah, and even if one of you yeah. can't move, the other three can. 
Right. So some of you can still carry people through quite easily. You literally, as long as three of you can do it, then okay. it, it doesn't matter. The one person can fuck up. And even if you don't want to carry them, you just kind of do it because you're not going to fucking walk into AOEs to be like, yeah, all, right, exactly. all right, I want to see you do it right this time. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's never, as long as one of you even can do it, you're good. I've never fucking failed it, so I don't even know what the fail can do. I think all four of you need to fail to lose the, to lose the fight. Right, right. And that's... I don't. I can't wait to see the first Reddit post where somebody shares a full failure on that fight. <laughs> I can't wait. To be, I still think it's fun. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see that concept applied elsewhere for reasons that we've stated as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the final boss was just good because there's shit ton of AOEs. There's shit. There's spread out mechanics. There's you know dashes across mm -hmm. the room. It's 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 just got a bunch of shit that's kind of happening back to back to back, and it's nice. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's just fine. Sly, at this point, only you and I can vote on the dungeon. So Bardem's Metal or the Airy. Please don't pick the Airy. The Airy was awful. <laughs> Why the fuck would I pick the Airy? The Airy was just so like, hey, let's let's make a dungeon that's like ten miles long and put like three mobs in it the entire fucking way. All right, that's yeah. the Airy in a nutshell. Yeah. So yeah, of course, Barden's Metal. Okay. The next one gets tough. We can't say the name of the level sixty-seven dungeon, but we are comparing it to the Vault. Quite possibly, vault. one of my favorite dungeons back from Heavensward. Some people said it felt, felt vault like. I didn't get that in a sense. I got that because there's a lot of points where there's a shit ton of mobs. Very mm -hmm. like I remember, there's a lot of points in the vault where you're just mobbed by like a mm -hmm. ton of things. And also, yeah. there's some mobs that behave similarly because they're reskins. Mm -hmm. That being said, the the set piece and the bosses themselves. I don't think the the first boss was eh, but the the second and third boss were great, in my opinion. Yes. Um, especially the second boss, which I have seen nothing but hilarious moments from. Let's just say that's that's the best way I can think to put it. You'll understand when you get there. Ethos, trust me. Yeah. I hope so. Um, it, it, in terms of its story involvement as well, the vault, again, the vault was strong story-wise. I mean, it has Cherbert. It has sickness must be purged. It's, it's, it's true. Cold it's true. And literally it got to the point with cold steel that we had combined memes where I, you do a duty roulette and you get the vault and it's cold steel must be purged while you were waiting. For it. <laughs> that happened. I got the vault in my leveling roulette and I got cold steel must be purged. It was That's terrible. That filthy rat you know you just had so, it's so many memes but terrible, the implication dude. of what the level 67 dungeon meant felt way more impactful the vault was like all right we got to catch up to this dude he's i don't know we got to ask him about some shit you know we amorix having some problems you know we got we got to go and get him back yeah the, the implication of what the 67 dungeon meant was astronomically more important to the way that the story ends up panning out. Mm -hmm. I think you said that in general about the story as a whole. Uh, there's a lot more weight to the story than any anything that happened in Heaven's Word. Well, anything that happened in 3.0, I'd say it has more impact. Because even like like the high impact points of Heaven's Word, you know, killing Nidhogg in the area. Oh, no, never mind. Joke, excuse back. Um... Uh, yeah, all, all, all the dungeons as well didn't have so much of an impact. I think definitely, like, the, the set pieces and, like, the big story pieces in 4.0 have more impact than those in 3.0. But you can't tell me the, like, you know, Final Steps of Faith, for instance, as a duty wasn't like, oh, my God, this changes everything. In comparison? Maybe not in comparison, but um, I don't know. I think I think we might be being a little bit harsh on like on like the weight and impact of Heaven's Woods story. Okay. Well, let's let's again let's let's touch back. Dusk Vigil was optional. So was She Sweet of the Violet Tide. So mm -hmm. those two we can't really mm -hmm. judge. 
Mm. However, we then look at um, we look at Barnum's medal, and I think that's mm. the least impactful if we're gonna if we're yeah. gonna talk about all of them in terms of ones that are forced as part of the main scenario. And Siren Song C has no impact. It's literally it has very little impact. It's it's along the way. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's something that happens while we're going it's, from A it's, to B. Uh, what, what do you call it? What do you call that in storytelling? Um, it's filler. <laughs> It's no, just... it's, there's 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 some there's something else. There's another name for it that I'm uh, that I, that's not coming to mind. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, Samal felt like it's like well we gotta go to you know here so yeah. we'll do that. Yeah. The level yeah. fifty five dungeon was should have been epic, and then he was just like, uh, really? Like the yeah. fifty five dungeon, and that's what ha him now? Okay, all right, mm -hmm. sure. If you say mm -hmm. so, fuck it. Um, and that's that was the problem where Heavensward kind of took a dive where it was like this whole point was this war and you just cut it off about halfway through the first set of main scenario quests. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, so it was almost and that frustrated me about Heavensward as well, like how quickly we resolved things. Yeah. It was frustrating. Um, then you have uh, the vault versus, again, this one. And these ones are, the, I think this is the closest where these mm -hmm. two have the most impact among mm -hmm. their 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 counterparts and mm -hmm. it's for me i honestly can't pick a favorite between the two to this day i still love running the vault but i also mm -hmm. even after a full day of running the level 67 dungeon for this one uh i loved it the whole time every time i do it it's just a good experience i mm -hmm. like the vault as a dungeon i just fucking hate running it i love running the <laughs> vault no I love it. The only thing I don't like are the stupid chess pieces. I don't care for those things. That's about what? It. The fucking horses. They're chess pieces. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, they're all right. They're all right. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's fine. Um, so I don't know about you, Sly. I can't pick. I honestly, for this point, I actually can't pick because the vault is one of my favorites. It's close. But I'd still go with this, this dungeon in um, 4.0. Then we have the 69 dungeon, Giggity. How you doing? Google Library, I like. But, again, if we want to talk about impact, Sly, I mean, Ethis, come on. Dude, where are my books? The Google Library was the Listen, super I, much I, 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 asked, I asked Koji for you, okay? He I was know. upset, too. I know he was upset because, like, he wanted to deliver on that one, but it was the, the most upsetting and disappointing part of Heaven's one for me. The Google was also one of those places where it was just like, there's something in there. You know, go get it. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the, six, the 69 one, mm -hmm. it's, it's more interesting dungeon, first of all. All the bosses mm -hmm. are better, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think mm -hmm. Google's bosses are very well done. Think about the Demon Tome. Think about the, the fucking... Uh, what's his name from Final Fantasy V? Uh, Biblos. Like, yeah, they were all right. They, they're all right, but like, the one in the, the level 69 one is, uh, is a vast improvement, I feel. In, do they have in there another do they have books? the boy and the gay dragon? They do not. They do not. They, they do not. But, and um, I will say that both dungeons, in terms of leveling, are fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. and trust Agreed. me, I'm well aware of it at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. So I won't really hit them on their their time taken or their or the uh, the rewards given, mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. I, I I can't I can't be brought to to bring Google above anything else, other than the books. It's just like I can't I can't do it. It's just it, it didn't feel like I needed to go there. It just you had jazz. You to go to I just, Google. It just it had jazz. I like the yeah, jazz. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But you you just felt like it um it did nothing did you well it did something for me a little bit lore wise but you just didn't feel it at all I couldn't feel it I couldn't read it I couldn't do anything I don't know I, I kind of felt like it was it was in line with I I like what happens immediately before and immediately after Google itself I don't know it did it did it did nothing for me I'll say that about hard mode though. Hard mode was even less, so. I feel like Gabor, and this is true, like, of a lot of Heaven's World dungeons, is that they don't feel like, um, they don't feel like climaxes. 
You know what I mean? It's like from what I've experienced so mm. far, like each each of the Stormblood dungeons, like they're they're hitting beats and they're hitting like the climax of a beat. Whereas mm. the Heaven's Ward ones were more just like it could have it, it's like no more or less impactful of section of story than the section before or after it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's just because... like a different way of delivering more story rather than being these, like I say, these sort of peaks, these sort of climaxes, which they seem to be for Stormblood. But it wasn't, like, to me, this wasn't the climax. And just like in Google, Google wasn't the climax either. It was, no, that's uh, what I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah. saying. No, but he's, like, he's, he's comparing them to 4.0. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. Um, I don't, well, 16, I feel like, to be fair, the level 69 dungeon didn't need to happen. It was something they put in there to kind of, Begin because that lead, was a bit of fill, you think? To be, to, it began to lead into things, but okay. when, when I think about the overall state of it, it it, it makes sense for it to be there, but mm -hmm. they but the, it they put it there. It didn't it didn't feel like a necessary step. It feel it, that felt like filler. Whereas Google was more filler. Mm -hmm. This one was a better filler. I could have okay. I could have lived without yeah. it, but I enjoyed it for what I enjoyed it for what it was far more than uh, than Google. Mm -hmm. Um. So Sly. I still think this one's still pretty tough. Google or level sixty nine dungeon, which yeah, it's a toss I didn't say we wouldn't name, but I'm just not. It's not even clear. Like the name of it is not. It's Castro Mabania. Like that doesn't. There's nothing you that doesn't tell you anything. Well, we know where it is. Yeah, we know where it is. We know that there's an imperial castrum in Girabania. Oh, surprise! Yeah. So, um, but this one for me, I'm gonna take Castro Mabania. It matters more, just because it matters more. I'll agree, but I still think it's kind of a toss-up overall. Mm -hmm. Then we get to the 70 main scenario quest, and I could just walk away at this point because ARF fucking sucks compared to this one. ARF is a complete shithole compared to the level 70 main <laughs> scenario quest. I don't mind. Uh, no, 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 no. You no, don't. Un you no. don't understand. This isn't even just about the dungeon itself. This is about everything that was wrong. With oh, Arf. I know, I know, I know. But I just want to say, like, Arf is. I, I mean, other than the fact that we had to farm up for light like a million times in a row, and we were getting level sick down to what was it, one eighty for that? That was a nightmare. I reckon Arf was a was a really well designed dungeon. Uh, I'll pass this to you, Happy. We we've had times where we had the farm arf like farm the living shit out of it mm -hmm. which would you prefer to farm i'd rather farm level 70 main scenario quest mm -hmm. in a heartbeat so here's the thing with arf barf yeah barf, barf. <clears throat> the first boss is gaius the second boss is mini coil the I'm third sorry. boss is slightly less shitty la habrea and then the final final boss is Stop fucking making me go into these holes that nobody can ever fucking pick a hole. All right. <laughs> That's what she said. <clears throat> Whereas the level 70 main scenario quest, again, the set piece, the implications, the importance, everything about the dungeon, including the monsters you fight, including the mm -hmm. bosses you fight, everything stands as an improvement. Mm hmm. And also, it's not fucking Allegan, which was, for me, the worst part of ARF. At that point, I was sick of Allegan shit. But you're just going on about how much you loved As This Law as a zone. Come on. I love As This Law as a zone. Mm. ARF I don't care about because it's the Aethor Chemical Research Facility. Great, there's fucking things in tubes. I like, I, like, other than that, it just, nothing about it felt like a, re the second boss is the closest thing to feeling like a research facility. Mm. And then the okay. whole implication of it, Honestly, I like the solo instance in Arf better than Arf. Now, I will say for the 70, uh, the second boss kind of was a letdown. Uh, it felt... I mean, story-wise, I kind of understand it. But it, it, in terms of the grand scheme of things, in the actual dungeon mechanics, it just felt a little lackluster to me. Like, it... It was. It wasn't even really a boss. You, it really didn't take long. Just, just remember. Oh wait, no, no, never mind. I was gonna, I was gonna say something about the mechanics. Then I realized I was thinking the wrong boss. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I everything, everything about it, for me was better. Now let me be clear about this. There's some other things that are better about this level seventy main scenario quest that aren't just the set piece. This mm -hmm. one's part of the fucking expert roulette. 
<laughs> we have three <laughs> expert dungeons again. That does make it better. It drops loot. And, and a lot of it, all the dungeons drop loot, a huge thing. All the dungeons drop a metric what, fuck the, ton of loot. What's the eye level of the loot out of interest? In uh, the... the same as the expert dungeons, 300. Okay. Because they're all part of the expert roulette. About okay. It even drops grade 5 and grade 6 materia from certain enemies. Ooh. Oh, dang. So doing it. everything is better about this. Ev uh, literally everything is better down to the music, to the set piece, to the rewards, to the fact that it gives us a three dungeon expert again, to the fact that mm -hmm. it's not the only slightly tedious part is the very beginning. And even then it's still exciting because there's a shit ton of mobs. Mm -hmm. And yes. especially when having played Monk and Samurai through it, Come on. <laughs> I got AoE out the ass. <laughs> um, uh, so for me, it's not even a question. It's like if I had to do 1 to 10 just ARF versus this, it would be the scale of 1 being ARF to 10 being the level 70 main scenario dungeon. Agreed. It's a 9 day, basically. Yeah. Right? Now, there is one point I want to bring up. Okay. And we can't, unfortunately, we have to be very sparse with this information, Sly. The All final right. trial that follows it. Mm. I actually would prefer Thornton. What, Thornton story mode? Fuck you, Mike. Really? Yes. You prefer Thornton story mode? I prefer Thornton. I had way more fun. I felt way more invested. Yeah. No. When Fuck I got no. and keep in mind, I did the same thing for mm -hmm. Heaven's Word, where I got to the end having not watched the story because I skipped it for the launch. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I went. <laughs> when I got to this one, I was like, "Really? Really?" Now, could that be because you just didn't get it in context because you fucking skipped everything? No. Thornton for you was like, you love Knights of the Round. You like, no, oh I didn't, God, I didn't give a shit about Knights of the Round. That's never given me a Final Fantasy boner. You were, you had such a boner over it being Knights of the Round. I had a boner over it, over what it became to be. Because I didn't realize at first. I saw it and I was like, oh. And then you slowly realize as you're going. Mm -hmm. I just think the spectacle of Thornton isn't... Uh, reliant on the story context. Whereas maybe this final trial is a lot more so. Okay, so let's be clear. Everything about Stormblood is more story involved and more mm -hmm. story reliant. That being said, mm -hmm. this is something that sh I feel like as someone who, you know, has looked forward to these things, this should have been a wow factor for me. Mm -hmm. I think it was the better it fight, to be fair. It was a wow factor for me. There was a slight bit of confusion when I first saw it and wondering wondering about the timing. Um like this high feels like it. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Again, I'm not I'm not up to that personally, so I I, I kind of agree. And like I was saying beforehand things about timing that now I'm kind of like uh, really? But that said, it seems like they did sort of build to it really well. So yeah. The fight itself? Fight itself's way better. The, it's way better. I, I'm still not getting how you prefer fucking Thornton over this. I, when I, it's just, when I, well, I remember my, I remember my so first cool. emotion, my first emotion getting to each of them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And realistically, this was more surprising Whereas mm -hmm. Thornton was just Being more expected, so coming from Thornton a was life. expected as fuck. Mm -hmm. Well, what Thornton eventually becomes night of the round mm -hmm. is was expected as fuck. Literally the launch trailer. The first thing they say is Thornton and his Knights 12. You literally mm -hmm. can't miss it. Right. You know what I mean? So, but so, I don't know. It's just something about Thornton was just, I was I was just more excited when when I was there, and I didn't have the context in I in in either one. I don't know. I didn't know how we got to this point where Thornton mm -hmm. was there. I 
there was no no information. It's the same thing. But, I'm, but I'm saying like the fact that it's such a big spectacle kind of mitigates that. Whereas I think you might have ruined this fight for you by disconnecting it from anything. Maybe I'll find out on Thursday because right. I and also I think there was a slight bit of disappointment for me with this one more mm. so because it was part of the main scenario. Whereas mm. I would agree with that. I didn't want. I didn't expect it but i also by the time it happened i didn't want it to be there mm -hmm. i didn't want it to be there i wanted it but not there just not right there yeah. right yeah I can, be I can... do you think you'll be happier when we get uh uh, uh... an extreme because yeah. there's no doubt that they're going to do the, the same thing valid, i was going to say yeah there's no doubt they're going to thwart in this where it gets an extreme in 4.1 mm -hmm. um but yeah, I just felt like even without, I mean, without thinking of, of an extreme, which is kind of the first thing I thought of when I was thinking about this fight, like this fight is going to be pretty fucking awesome as an extreme. Mm -hmm. This was the better fight. It was the better this, fight. This, hands, it, down. It, it, hands down, better fight, better experience than Thornton. You're going to wipe on this one more than you did Thornton. That's for fucking certain. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can say for a fact that uh, last night, I mean, maybe I was just fucking tired, but good lord. Thornton was a real snooze, though. Like, the story mode Thornton was a real, like, oh, yeah. trap. So can, you, can, can we say that in general, um, dungeon-wise, they kind of amped up the... Everything. Necessary, yeah, everything, but <laughs> difficulty, maybe? No. Um, again, we went back to the item level discussion, and it was, mm -hmm. it was the same thing happened before in Heavensward, but it, this was mm -hmm. far more prolific in terms of the item level differences. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that because of the leveling experience, that did make it feel more difficult. I think that as the years go on and you keep, you know, you get scaled down, and even when you're in retrospect, down, it's not going to be any more difficult. I mean, they were saying that leading up to Stormblood, they were saying, "Oh, challenge new dungeon." No, we clarified that. They said exactly they, the same thing. They 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 the only story. said the only reason, the only thing that might be harder is people figuring out the job changes. That was the main mm -hmm. thing that they said would be the difference between the dungeons. Yeah. Um, but um, they were they were in. I don't think, from what I've seen so far, they're no way more challenging than Heaven's Ward. I will say this: another thing with Thornton is the music got me. I was more into Thornton's music than I was into the oh, final trial. The Thornton's theme is to this day still one of my favorites. Like of all the themes, this one hands down. This one was right. good, but whenever I like the Thornton's theme, just blows me out of the fucking water. I love this one it. Was this one blows Thornton away. I'm sorry. Nah, I I, nah, man. Nah. It, it just felt. I think Mike just wants more, to play Thornton, to be honest. Yeah, I know, right? It just felt more epic. I didn't. I didn't epic feel that. Felt more epic. I didn't. I didn't feel I that. Know, I, don't, I don't know if it was just the scale of everything, but it just felt more epic. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it, man. Fight. I'll give you that. I didn't feel the music. And the other reasons that I stated, I, for that until I I won't I won't say I like one better until I have the full co the full context. Freaking update, just made a loud noise. I won't I won't grade the, between the two until I have the full concept of both because I have a better concept of how, where Thornton stands versus where this trial mm -hmm. stands. Mm -hmm. Sly, if you want to go ahead, because I don't know. Because did you watch the story on stream? I sure did. Okay, I'm just making sure because. I, I didn't want to, you know, assume you did one or the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let you grade, even though I think that, you know, you, yeah. Which one? Can I just say it? I need you to say it. We need. I need you to officially say it. This one, Stormblood. Okay, Stormblood. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. There's still two more dungeons. To talk mm -hmm. about the level seventy ones. Uh. I guess it doesn't. It's not really. You can see the dungeon entrances you, you, in you your. You can go ahead and say it. You can go ahead and say Temple it. Temple of the Fist and Kugane Castle. I won't tell you who the last boss of Kugane Castle is, though. I'll let I'll let you because that's that was that was great. God damn it! That was great. That's why, that was great. Best boss. Okay, let's just say <laughs> never reap. <laughs> Okay, so keep in mind we're comparing this to Never Reap and Fractal Continuum. <laughs> Do we even have to? 
I like Fractal, but never... I like Fractal too. No. I don't like I, again. I was tired of Allegan shit at that point, but Fractal. Ooh. I like Fractal better than Arf at the very least. Mm -hmm. I was tired of Fractal. I'm sorry. Um, well, I mean, at this point, I'm tired of it. It's been two fucking years. Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway, Temple of the Fist. It's, it's my least favorite of the three experts. But really? it's no, it's no never reap. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's a grand step above never reap. And I don't even hate never reap all that much. I still to this day don't actually hate never reap. But never reap sucks, dude. <laughs> but if I had to take a dungeon and compare it to never reap, it would be Temple of the Fist. But even then, Temple of the Fist is like, like a whole second That's never reap above never reap. Like you'd have to yeah. stack two never reaps to get the Temple <laughs> of the Fist. And Kugane Castle is... I Listen, give us experts like this, even in the odd-numbered patches where there's only one of them. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. Do you think it's a little bit rose-tinted glasses with the final boss? Because I'm, I'm kind of getting that. So, it is. It's only because it was done so well. <laughs> yeah, I, I can say that. Are you, saying, are you saying the final boss is Hancock? Rose-tinted glasses. Yeah. Like that? <laughs> no. yeah no. yeah shut up mm -hmm. anyway yeah the final boss of, of kugane cool. castle is done fantastically <laughs> the way it even finishes was just perfect. yes yes yeah every, every everything everything about it is what you'd want and everything mm -hmm. about it sets a tone for the fuck you too sets a tone for the future <laughs> what <laughs> you see my glasses <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. So let's let's wrap up the dungeon discussion. Let's just group mm -hmm. them both up. Never Reap and Fractal, even if you liked them, versus Temple of the Fist and Kugan and Castle. Not even a contest. I agree. It's it's a, you know what? I just realized there's no point in me not fucking spoiling the last boss. It was in the dungeon trailer. It's Jimmy. Jimmy. It's, it's, <laughs> Yo, Jimbo. We already saw it yeah. in the dungeon preview. I mean, if you didn't see it, well, it was there, so fuck it. But it was in the dungeon, and it's beautifully done. It's well done. They like it. It hits you in a nostalgia, like right then and there. But during the fight, once you see the mechanics, they. Guys, it's not. It's not a fucking spoiler, all right. They got it spot on. It's yeah, not a spoiler. Just, I, I still won't tell you how the fight goes because that's something you need to experience for the first time. Yeah, you need to experience for yourself how it goes and that'll yeah. really hit you. It was, like, here's the thing. We knew Yojimbo was in the expansion. We saw him in the dungeon trailer. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. There was a lot of people didn't see the dungeon trailer, Mike. Too bad. It was public information. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. That's public domain on this one, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're we're claiming public so. domain on this one. I think uh, so. Yeah, I completely forgot it was in the dungeon trailer. Because Xenos is a bad guy. Yeah, he's a bad Spoiler. guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In case you didn't know from the launch trailer, Xenos is a bad. No, he's Xenos is a good guy. He's just misunderstood. All right. We're, we're the we're the bad guy. I kind of feel like that's spoiler. No, <laughs> that's not because I don't know what I'm talking about, Sly. I haven't I watched any of it. Crap. I literally no. haven't watched any of the story, Sly. How could it be a spoiler? Well, once you see it, you'll, you'll understand. We all know the fucking. We all know it's Gaius was vindicated as shit too. Who the fuck cares? All the Garleans think they're better Excuse than me? everyone else. Who the fuck cares? Did you seriously just ask who the fuck cares about Gaius? Yes, he's. He's going to be, he's going to, I don't, when I watch it on Thursday, he better still be fucking dead. All right. That's all. <laughs> that's all I know. He better still be fucking dead. By the time I watch this story on Thursday. You'd be, you'd be surprised how many times Gaius manages to slip into the story. I've literally watched nothing and he better be fucking dead what? when I watch the story on Thursday. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> But you have to use steps on people, also. I wish guys would step on people. <laughs> okay. All right. So. All right. So big thing. 
We've done with all dungeons, done with the zones, all that. Story, we've kind of already covered the scope of the story when talking about the dungeons, in a sense. Mm-hmm. I want to very quickly talk about the primals. So anything's better than Bismarck. I'll put oh, that yeah. out there. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Ravana, on the other hand, as a launch primal, was, was awesome. pretty well done. Yeah, it was pretty great. These, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it properly. I can agree with you on one in that sentiment. Which one? Lakshmi. Lakshmi. So Lakshmi's fight is like the most difficult, not difficult fight I've ever done. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Like, how do you mean that? Like just um, mechanic vomit? So there's a new mechanic that is in World of Warcraft. We have it now. It's called the duty action button. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, you used it. You use it in another main scenario mission. You can key mm-hmm. bind it. So mm-hmm. I highly recommend anyone go into okay. your hot bar settings and bind your duty action button. Because if they give us a key bind for it, you can be pretty damn well sure we're going to see it again. We've seen it twice, as far as I remember so far. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Fair enough. But the way that Lakshmi works, you're pre- you pretty much either are completely fucking immune to some shit and like barely need to worry about it or you mm-hmm. instantly die. But regardless of which one happens, you can still win. <laughs> oh, I've literally, we must have res like 18 times and still beat it. Holy shit. So it's very forgiving, <laughs> but at the same time, it's not because any slip is an instant death for that person. Yeah. Minus, like, one mechanic, I think. Like, one one mechanic. But each slip, like, you're only having to take responsibility for yourself, basically, right? Unless you go and stand next to the other people who are going to get fucked. Right, so it's not, it's, not, it's not a case of, like, if one person fucks anything up, it will wipe the whole party. Unless they bring it to the rest of the party. <laughs> right. So, so in that sense, I guess it is, like, fairly forgiving. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, but it's, in every way, more mechanically challenging... Then, like Ravana mm-hmm. and Bismarck, and even okay. Sus- even Susano, like okay. Now, are you comparing normals or exes? E- of course, extremes. The normals, who gives a shit? Honestly, Lakshmi normals <laughs> fucking hilarious. Before people know what the duty action button is, but once you know what it is, it's a joke. Like it's a joke. But when I first did it, I mean, it, we got through. But normally I'm able to take at least something away from that fight. I couldn't take away anything from that fight. It, it was interesting, but I couldn't even say interesting bad or interesting good. It was just, it's just a, a big question mark to me. Well, the hmm. big the big thing with that mechanic is, is Vril. Yeah. It's very confusing. Basically, she's got two forms. She's got normal, and if you Vril something in normal, it heals you. If you really, and then she's got chinchilla, which I call chinchilla, ch- ch- chihuahua, like whatever. I don't, I don't fucking know. Every time I forget the name of it, I just call it, I just call it chihuahua or, 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 or you know, chimichanga or chinchilla. something, you know. And when she's in chimichanga, if you don't vril it, you inst- you pretty much die to whatever mechanic it is. <laughs> but it basically makes it so that when you vril, you just live the mechanic. So it's, you don't have to be good at anything. You just have to press the the vril button, and that's it. You win. <laughs> the win button. You win. It's literally a win button. I don't know how to describe it in in <laughs> any better way. And I, it's weird because it's such it's such a clusterfuck of a fight that is immediately undone by the very mechanic they give you to undo it. I don't know how to feel about that as like a as like an encounter. Mm. Item level scaling aside, the fact that you can get through it with even a shit ton of deaths, you know, just that mechanic, as interesting as it is, as new as it as it is, it's literally brand new. Like they've never done this duty action button before. Right. I don't know how I feel about something being literally given to me, and it's like just press that button when the time is right, and you'll live every time, man. Do you think this button will, you know? Well, they will, it will continue to be as influential. Obviously as influential because it's designed that way. But right. so much so to the point where it's literally, don't press it, die, press it, and guess what? You're fine. Well, we had something like that 
in A11S. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, like, listen, it's, that's a whole different story. That's press yeah, any but, button. Yeah, but it was still like inconsequential. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like um, it may as well have been automatic. Yeah. I guess yeah, I can understand. I can understand. This one at least you have a limited number of them. That one you're just doing it once. And this mm -hmm. one's like it's about keeping as many as you need in order to survive things without using too many of them. But even then, they they never put you in scenarios where you're like, guess I'll use an extra. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very clear mm -hmm. I will have to use it on exactly these this amount of mechanics well, that will. It's probably because it, it is a new mechanic and it's something that they're planning on putting in future fights. That this is just like an introduction to it, and it's like, hey, you're going to be doing stuff like this in future fights, maybe. I don't know how many. I dude, I'd rather have. There's a specific type of quest that you do in certain parts of the main scenario. I want to see more of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Sly know. knows. I'm not <laughs> saying what it is. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you probably know what I'm talking about, but I want to see that in Omega. <laughs> Why? How would they even do no. that? <laughs> no. Oh. That'd be great. Oh my god, how would that even work? I mean, it worked for the quests. So why not? They went through all that trouble to develop it. Why not? That's true. Like that, I was like, really? Just for this? <laughs> okay. Um, and then for Susano. It's weird because, mm -hmm. again, Susano is very mechanically like there's a lot of things that go on. But once again, I one shot Susano Extreme. <laughs> we had one, I think, two, actually two people who had beaten it and they just yelled out, run to. Oh, okay. They, they didn't like, they just barely explain, like, okay, we'll explain, right. like, we explain like two things in the first phase and then we'll, after we wipe, we'll tell you the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't wipe. <laughs> they just yelled mechanics as as we got to the last phase, and we. So is basically just a, a, a hoop jump. It's a lot of jumping and a lot of dancing, right? But a do you think this sets a precedent? Because these, while they were better than Zervin as fights, they almost felt Zervin esque in terms of their scale. Not sore. There's no sore things like that. There's none of that no. I've experienced so far as skipping mechanics, and unless you can. Like Alexander, like A12 Savage, where you skip the end of the fight by doing enough DPS. Mm -hmm. There's that, but there's no like straight up, hey, skip sword, disband. You know, it's it's skip last mechanic or disband, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that sets a, a, a precedent? A precedent for the, uh, not a, pres a precedent, a precedent. I said it right the first time and then I went back and undid it. Uh, it sets a, pre a precedent for, for the future? No. No? No, I think um, Susana is the president we deserve. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, president of Rebel. In, in comparison, uh, going back again to the, even though it wasn't a primal, primal trial, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm optimistic. Well, the final trial is meant to, something that's still designed to be beaten as part of the main scenario. It's toned down. It's but once we get EX, it's not it's not as kind of cut and dry as Susano or Lakshmi is. There's gonna be a lot. I of, think lot it's more. gonna be pretty cut and dry. I think Super Savage is where I'm gonna be looking for not cut or dry that patch. Like I I don't want to go into that fight and one shot it, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but at this point I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. Hmm. Just because hmm. of the way Susano went. Because even Lakshmi, we all, every single one of us went in blind. It took six pulls. So do you think? Do you think that these two are easier than Bishbuck and Ravana? So, okay. Even Ravana. Let me put. Let me put it this way. I beat mm. Bismarck at item level one forty four and Ravana at one fifty. Yeah. These ones I didn't. By the time because the final dungeon gives you gear and you get Verity tombstones and shit like that from it's mm. so then the costs are way down on tombstone stuff. Mm -hmm. The weapon is 500 and everything else is less than that. Right. Right. And right. So you're, so you're entering in a much better. Yeah. State. You're entering yeah. at a much, and plus the, plus the, the item level you get from the job quest and whatnot. Um, right. Right. I feel like they set you up to be at a higher item level for these. And mm -hmm. at that higher item level, I'd say they're somewhat equivalent to Ravana. 
If I did, if they, if I got into Ravana and I, the, my first a few attempts were like I won seventy, I won eighty, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'd probably so. have fucking annihilated it like I did these, you know? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that that was a huge part of it. Like Ravana felt quite difficult, but it's because we were so poorly geared. And as soon as you went in there, like you're saying, one seventy or one eighty, you just destroyed it. Yeah. These. Okay. It's very. I feel like if I had been thrown, and the, by the way, the minimum item level for these is three hundred. Where I don't know what Ravana's. I don't know what Ravana's is. It might be one seventy or one sixty or no. something like that. No, it's. I think it's even lower than one. I think it's like one fifty, one fifty five or something. Something like that. I don't it's know. Very low. But if I had done these at 280, 40 item levels under the weapon, I probably mm. would have got fucked in the ass really hard. <laughs> As forgiving uh, as it oh, was. Shit. Actually, 175. For Ravana? Uh, yeah, it says average item level 175 for Ravana Extreme. There, there you go. They, oh, they upped them, didn't they? They upped them both. I don't know. They did. Yeah, no, they did. They they upped yeah. them both um, in, in, I think, 3.1 or maybe even before 3.1, precisely because people were going into them in like 150 and failing the DPS checks. I don't know. Either way, I, dude, 175 at that point for Ravana, like yeah, destroy it. <laughs> it's not even fair. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I kind of want to try these at like a like a like an entry. Like as soon as whatever gear you would like end and get to level 70 with without the job quest stuff, I kind of mm-hmm. want to do them at that item level and see what the experience mm-hmm. is like. Otherwise, mm-hmm. the the experience is hard to compare. I do like these bosses better. So you want to try doing them at like I two seventy five or something? Yeah, that'd be I, fun. I want to. I still want to go back and do Twintania at I fifty five. We only we the poll we were gonna win went back when I did try that. I disconnected, uh, and so we didn't have enough. Uh, we didn't have the DPS to kill the fucking dreadnought, the 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 no. dread knights. Yeah. So. Although I reckon that would be a nightmare now. Like, trying to, tr- Dragoon at 60 at the moment is a fucking nightmare. It is so, it's just like, oh. You haven't, you haven't done Death it's Sentence weird. at I-55. <laughs> it's weird. I, it's I weird. have. I f- no, 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 I fi- no, no, I-55. I-55 like, taking a Death Sentence is. Yeah, no, it would have been, fi- yeah, I've done it like I-70. <laughs> That's a bad That's experience. Scary. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Oh, man. Um. I don't know. I like these better than Bismarck and Ravana overall, but when talking about the fights, mm-hmm. just the way that we I got past them as quickly as I did was shocking. Mm-hmm. So Does I don't that make know. you regret it all blowing through the story. <laughs> no, because because the main reason I did was because I was streaming, especially with everyone stuck at Cold Steel. I didn't want to stream. Yeah, you didn't want people to. Quest. Yeah, you didn't want to spoil things. Like especially with everything that was happening. Like I had already planned on that before, but especially with everything mm-hmm. with Cold Steel. Like all yeah, those people really like sitting at the stream, just, just over and over again for fucking two days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I had a lot of people that were much happier watching me level samurai than doing the story stuff. Um, but I was like, well, that's that's your problem. So I don't regret it, but I absolutely for weeks determined. I was like, play it, play or not watch it, watch it, not watch it. <sighs> okay, not watch it. <laughs> Got so it. you're just you're just gearing up alts between now and Omega. Uh, well, if I do it right, I could have all fifteen jobs to seventy in like two weeks. I don't want to do that. But... No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that one. I mean, yeah. I figured it out. It takes twelve hours per day. Less. I'm sorry. If in terms of active dungeon time, probably about nine and a half hours. Mm-hmm. With. Anywhere from twelve to twenty minute runs, and you could do. That's, that's a lot faster than it was to get from fifty to sixty at the start of Heaven's Ward. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, it is. Faster. Oh yeah, it is. We do have a few additional things here. Like we do have. I think we didn't have grade three, uh, free company. I think we even have free company buffs at Heaven's Ward launch. We didn't have them at all, did we? Yeah, we, we did. Did, yeah. did we? Yeah. Oh yeah, we had those. We didn't have the ethereal wheel. Yeah, so we didn't have grade. Yeah, we didn't have the ethereal. We didn't have the grade three ones. Yeah, yeah so that's yeah. another. That's another five percent. Plus, yeah. I think they just scaled these dungeons better. Oh yeah, much better. Much, or whatever, better. or whatever it is. Um, yeah, no, it's super fast, dude. It's like six to eight hours for fifty to sixty in Pals of the Dead. Yeah, that's crazy. And this is what we're gonna talk about next: 
is leveling. <laughs> Whoa! Because there's one piece of content that has jumped out ahead of almost everything in terms of leveling now. Oh. PvP. Mm-hmm. That's PvP. true. How do we yeah. how do we feel about that? Because we were suspecting that I mean, some people were even doubting whether it was going to offer experience at all, given, you know, that we can unlock it at level 30. I was pretty sure it would, but I didn't think, I thought that, like... It well, when we got the patch be, notes, we knew for certain. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, but I thought, like, at most, we might be getting, you know, the equivalent of a, of a dungeon run. Yeah. yeah. So, I had, so you, you had a reaction when I brought it up. It's ridiculous. I tried to actually try to get in and cash, on, cash in on this. Um... Funny thing is, like, I wanted to test out the uh, PvP changes, and I did a little bit in the Wolves' Den, but mm-hmm. in response to this alone, the experience you get from PvP alone, I think we are going to get the same thing we got when um, Season 1 of the Feast was implemented, and people who are there for the free chicken... I said this word for word. I said when I heard how good it was, I was like, oh, God. I actually said I will not level with it now because I'm afraid. I don't want to go. I know there's going to be enough free chicken people Mm -hmm. in there. And I was like, I don't. I don't. I like having the option, but that's always Mm -hmm. like more so in Final Fantasy 14 than other MMOs. There's so many people that do things for free chicken. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It should be the path of least resistance. And that's what it is at the moment, isn't it? Right. And that's and frustrating. Takes, and it takes away from the implementation and all the new implementations of PvP and it being more competitive now with these mm-hmm. implementations. It, it definitely takes away from it, I think. Well, that'll sort of level out in, a, in I don't know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or like a mm-hmm. month. For, for people who are actually leveling other jobs, I don't think it'll ever... I think I'm going to have to PvP 60 to 61 on almost every job because 60 to 61 is very similar to 50 to 51 in Heaven's Word. It's the worst mm-hmm. part of the entire leveling mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. You either Palace of the Dead, which you're fucking sick of by the time you get to 60. You do Fates, which are always hit or miss because you don't know if enough people are going to be doing them. Mm-hmm. And Or you there's no battle leaves for 60 to 61. The challenge log, maybe. You've got roulettes, which don't really scale. The Only the leveling roulette really scales well. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's not a lot of great options 60 to 61 so mm-hmm. I don't know maybe there's a level 60 dungeon that's really good that I don't know about yet maybe no yeah, maybe hmm. uh, I haven't maybe. I haven't tried so I don't know <laughs> you could do Google maybe Google I mean you, we did I mean think of it this way people did Orm Bale from 50 to 51 because the way we do our dungeons now is we do 61, 62 and then 63 we switch so Google mm-hmm. could potentially be the same thing 59, 60, 61 mm-hmm uh, well, that's true. That's or, true. Or maybe one of the hard mode dungeons because they're level sixty. If you can do them fast enough, you'll speed through them with no item level restriction. You know, that's that's the one thing. Please don't make me do it, Arf. Someone just recommended Arf in the chat. Please don't recommend. <laughs> I just it. recommended Arf. Shut up. <laughs> be great. Yeah. So what what what's going to happen, right? Is that um. This is going to be the least res- the, the path of le- least resistance for leveling up, um, mm-hmm. basically until we get to four point one and they start putting uh, experience into Blitzball. <laughs> and then you can just Blitzball from sixty to sixty one, and that'll be great. Yeah, really good art. Yeah, I agree. Uh, F, F in chat for Mr. Happy. Everyone, rip, rip in peace. <sighs> okay, so do you think that PvP giving experience, part of it was because it's rollless like Palace of the Dead, and mm-hmm. they knew that our DPS queues were going to be ass? Because guess what? Big fucking surprise, they are. <laughs> I think it was to draw more people in to see the changes to PvP. You don't think it's part of their grandmaster plan to to have a more rollless content people can level in? Because we'll let's be it. honest, it definitely drew people into PvP for the free mm. chicken. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it drew people in for the wrong reason. I mean, while they're there, they can see the changes. 
That's what they're going to stick around, though. They'll stick around for the free chicken. Not but do we them. want them to stick around only for the free chicken and not for no. actual good PvP matches? No. That's the problem. That's why it should not be the most efficient way to level. It should be a good way to level. It should be like getting experience from it is great, but oh man. I, so I think it should be oh go ahead. I, I think that it will start to rectify itself after like a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, where you know there'll be like less density of people trying to get through there just for the free chicken. Um, mm -hmm. So it won't be so bad in the long run, but like that's obviously what they're trying to do. They're trying to encourage people to try it, hoping that, you know, oh yeah, I'll try new PVP because it's a great way to level. And then they go, oh shit, this is actually really fun. And they start like doing it seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's probably what they were going for, but no one's going to try hard enough to get to that point. So 3.0, free chicken was tones. Mm -hmm. you know? That was just the like it was the easy way to get tones. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think they should just remove rewards like this? Hands no. down. No, oh, I I I think having being able to level via PvP is good. It should just not be better than pretty much any other way to level. I think that's ridiculous. It should give you a little bit. Yeah, because my concern is still the same that people do 10 levels with their nine actions and then they get to 70 mm -hmm. and they're like, <laughs> what do I do? All right. Well, and especially because all the people are going to, I mean, we can't help but recommend it when people ask for good level methods of leveling. We're going to say right. PVP because it is a good mm -hmm. method of leveling. And mm -hmm. then newer players, whether they be people who potioned, especially people who potioned and already don't know what they're doing necessarily right. and then they go into pvp and then they get to 70 and now they've even foregone the 10 level of the 10 levels of learning their job for pve right right and they're probably going to expect level 70 to be like the same combat as pvp a lot of them it's not. Being like why are we going to these actions what is this crap yeah uh, it's just the job like job mechanics in general like, yeah i do i do hope they nerf the pvp experience a little bit yeah I'm I am I am just afraid of players being recommended to go there, and it giving us the Palace of the Dead effect, which, you mm -hmm. know, but at least Palace of the Dead is your PVE skills, as much yeah, as I think it's, it'll be way more severe. Than but it's, yeah. but it's it's mindless DPS. Like you can get away with murder in Palace of the Dead. PVP, you actually have to fucking at least know something. So I'll say like in terms. It's not of that, something that's like applicable to to PVE and game in any way. Right. I'll tell you this. I, I have a different mentality than a lot of people when it comes to leveling. I like to learn as I level. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, don't like I, to learn at, I don't like to learn at max level only as much as I know that's where the majority of the learning is going to go. Samurai mm -hmm. did 60 to 70 today. Every two levels from 60 to 70, I had to go holy shit and fucking remap everything in my brain. Mm -hmm. Because the job changed a metric fuck ton at 62. It, mm -hmm. changed, another, it changed another metric fuck ton at 68. Mm -hmm. And then it changed another match. And then, and then actually, no, 62, 68 are the two big changes where I went, what the, mm -hmm. you, but, you know, that, that's, that, that scene mental from process, right? that mental process prepares you for learning at a level 70. and makes you like more well quit because by that point, like in having to reassess those actions a couple of times, you have like a really, really solid understanding of what the different actions do. So mm -hmm. then when it all comes together at level seven, you're really, really well equipped, equipped to think about, uh, optimizing your rotation and stuff like that. Whereas if you were just thrown in there in the deep end, you just go, what the fuck is all this? Yeah. And ultimately, it does come down to if they want to learn, they will. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. But I think at least being exposed to the same PvE skills throughout your leveling process is somewhat of a boon versus yeah. Yeah, two, what ultimately feels like two completely different concepts in terms of play style even just the way you don't even auto attack in pvp anymore oh really yeah oh you tired that's right you don't auto attack there's no auto attacks in pvp anymore that's strange you can't block you can't parry there's no auto attacks there's no crits there's no direct hits it's literally the damage of your abilities which is a one-to-one -one ratio with potency yeah. to damage or potency to healing Plus any yeah. effects that may reduce or increase by a percentage or have an additional it's one to one potency to health as well like you know exactly like there's no sort of mitigation or anything no there's nothing which is why paladins are not having a great time in pvp and why bards are shitting on people in pvp 
If you want to, yeah. if you want to PvP, guys, just go on Bard yeah. and hit a Paladin yeah. and laugh because so they need to give Bards like less health and Paladins more health. I don't know what they need to do, but Bard, then... Bard needs, <laughs> Bard is ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's really, really funny when you see a Bard absolutely just one by one dismantle an entire team. <laughs> No, they don't dismantle. That's a machinist action. Exactly. Yeah. I set that up. I actually was hoping he was going to do So I actually was hoping you would do it. But Why? I no, no, no. I never get involved in your shenanigans. Fuck that. Dude, no. I'm on the fucking ball today. I don't care what you say. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm speaking of which, the PvP changes. What I mean, mm -hmm. in general, what do we what do we think? I haven't gotten to do it yet. I've only spectated no, some either. matches. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm avoiding it because of the free, the, the free chicken. Mm -hmm. Me too. I tried the queue, didn't get in. Queue was, queue was terrible, but I went to the wolves den just to kind of practice the changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I can only speak for goon. Like it's definitely, it's mechanically speaking in terms of the job. It's definitely different. Um, your expectations coming from PVE and then you get there and then everything about the mechanic for you know um wheeling and fang and claw like it mm -hmm. it just kind of fucks with your um fucks with the mentality of what you have for the pv version so um i mean having to reset the heart like first of all going into the wolves then ha having a pvp hot bar alone feels great yes that is the best thing like just Instantly teleporting. Oh, everything's gone. You only have one hot bar. You only need one hot bar. No, man, you need um, the other hot bar for the quick chat. That's oh, yeah, true, that's actually. right. That's God, true. Damn it. I need to remake my fucking hot bar. No. Happy, why are you telling me this shit? Would you rather have to put your controller down and talk, Sly? Just think about it for a second. Oh, my God. No. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. No. I. Sl you're 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 going full at this keen flurry right now, Sly. <laughs> Speaking of which, side note, I miss um Keen Flurry. Hell no. Ring of Thorns. <sighs> Power Surge, Phlebotomize. Fuck that. Speaking of which <laughs> Yeah. How are you doing on TP, by the way? It's infinite. It's infinite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. TP's actually infinite now, unless you're yeah. AOEing or you die. Like, that's the next thing they're going to remove. Might as well, dude. I literally, as a monk, cannot run out of TP. It's impossible. It, like, I actually did, did this off stream. Mm -hmm. Just hit a fucking dummy. And this was before I even got 70 um, mm -hmm. abilities. Hit a dummy. Took me 10 minutes to get down to one, 100 TP. <laughs> yeah. It's like in, in Vigor Wyatt. <laughs> like, why even take Invigorate? Yeah, don't need that shit. For when you die, that's pretty... Oh, or you need to AoE in a fight. Mercy Stroke is what it was. I miss Mer Mercy Stroke. Oh, yeah, Mercy I miss Mercy Stroke as well. Like, I keep going to hit Mercy Stroke. I keep going to hit, like, Leg Sweep for, for mm. deep. It, I gotta say, like, at level 60... I know that it feels a lot better at 70, but level 60, you're weaving like so little in Dragoon that it feels really, really slow. It does not feel good. I do not like the feeling of Dragoon at 60 anymore. And going back and doing level 60 content, I'm going to be like, oh. I did ARF today. I did ARF today with everything that I have. Like, yeah. I'm sitting now. Yeah, and the, and the change to Gear Shkogel as well just makes it so fucking boring at 60. I love Dragoon at 70, don't get me wrong. Like, I love the Dragoon changes. Everything mm -hmm. I've seen from at level 70, like, I'm absolutely in love with. But how it plays at 60 now is so fucking boring. It gets interesting at 70. It like, certainly does. Just trying to work out everything in my head mm -hmm. at 70. It, it, it very, is sorry. interesting. It, uh, mm -hmm. it very much reminds me of Machinist, Dark Knight, and Astro. Mm -hmm. At 50, they feel super incomplete. 
Right, and then because by, they are. Yeah. And that's how we have to look at it now. Is like, well, it's kind of like when you go into Orm Vale and you're level 49 and you're like, oh, I don't have all my things yet. And, uh, that's kind of how it feels like being at level 60 now. And at least for Paladin, they're like, I can AoE at fucking 46. That's true. That's, true. that's a good point. <laughs> now, as I saw, we'll agree with you. Mm -hmm. 60, 60 felt weird. weird. Mm -hmm. 64 felt a little bit better. Mm hmm Yep, once you've got your full five-part combo. Mm -hmm. Still not weaving. Nothing, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and then, like, your next, pretty, pretty much your next breaking point is 70. But, mm -hmm. even, like, even still, like, 60 to 64, nothing. 64 on kind of felt familiar. I mean, mm -hmm. not having phlebotomized, not having uh, stuff to weave in didn't really take away from anything. I It felt like a normal 60 goon mm -hmm. until I got 70 and then shit detected well 60 goon was all about the weaving for me like that was yeah. what was so satisfying about it um mm -hmm. but, but 70 again you've got so much other shit to track um mm -hmm. and you obviously like weaving a lot of mirage dives and stuff listen like if you want to have a lot of fun managing off global cooldowns you will play samurai and then you will oh root, yeah it's you will rue the die the day the die you will rue the day that you wish you had more off global cooldowns <laughs> because samurai it's <laughs> it's like what, what do i use like with samurai it's like there's so many choices for like each time you want to weave something you're like oh shit what do i uh so the yeah i'm gonna have a lot of fun with samurai anyway we should we should do a melee show in like every know. show is a fucking melee show <laughs> You kidding me? Uh, you know, you know what I mean. I mean you know what I that mean. was very uh, mating, Sam. This is yeah. melee. Yeah, do do the melee show. Yeah. Uh, speaking of jobs that I love watching, so I was thinking yeah. about it when we were talking about PvP and PvE. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Bahamut cracks me up <laughs> because Why? he actually does. I've actually not seen mechanics because he's standing fucking behind me at this point. Mm -hmm. So that actually has happened. So I'm like, get the fuck out of the way Bahamut but what's funnier is in PvP when a summoner's switching targets and he mm. moves in between he's like <laughs> just drifting around <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it looks pretty... so fucking so funny so he doesn't just rotate like he actually moves yeah <laughs> and as soon as the summoner starts running away then he turns away from them and then you turn back for the ruin too and then he turns back towards you <laughs> oh, the this is going to sound so stupid because I had one in my FC house, but the first time I actually saw it from a summoner, like, I looks forgot. Like statue, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like the fucking statue. I was like, what? what's the fucking, oh, is shit. The same model? Yeah. <laughs> what's this statue doing out here? <laughs> <laughs> That's my exact thought. I was like, wait, what the fuck is the statue? Oh, shit. Summoner's got that. I forgot about that. <laughs> I love it. It's it's so fun. Just go in, next time you go into PvP, just look for some like if you see like look in your alliance list. If you see a summoner, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. focus target them and just look for them. <laughs> just follow them. Just follow them. And you'll <laughs> and you'll see exactly what I mean. Oh, snap. Oh, that's good. So the for, in terms of launch without going into spoilers, that covers a vast majority of the things we can talk about. Dungeons, the primals, mm -hmm. jobs, PvP. Um, the rewards for the dungeons, the fact that our expert roulette is three dungeons again. Mm -hmm. Thank God so much. Um, gearing up's way less demanding of a process. and So now we have mm -hmm. to look towards the next four weeks. Two weeks from now, we receive Omega Delta Normal. The first Delta. tier. Of, yeah, the first tier of Omega. And... Uh, I expect that to be the creator normal mm -hmm. all over again. I don't know about you guys, mm -hmm. but then we look to Savage four weeks from today. And we, I guess we also look towards the new Aquapolis. Oh, I mm -hmm. want to bring that up, by the way, speaking of treasure maps. I, I want to bring that up on the show because I brought it up in pre-show about the map thing that we, that we talked about in pre-show with Ixion. With Ixion? Yeah. Because that's I just... Think that's great. Yeah. Right. We'll, oh. let's, we'll talk about that after we cover this, though. All right. Okay. So where, where do your expectations lie for... Omega Savage in terms of uh, difficulty, in terms of uh, in terms of I guess Omega's story as well. Based, I, I don't again. I haven't seen this story, so I don't know the setup. I'm gonna assume there's something like Alexander 
like towards the end where it's just like, hey, don't forget, this is happening soon. I well, but, the thing is, they've they set up the story and they set it up like, already on top of that. Yeah, they they started setting up the story for Omega in two point three. Yeah, right. So it's it's comparable. I mean, a, apart from the CG cutscene, it's comparable to the setup for uh, for Binding Coil. Um, so I reckon it's already like way ahead there in terms of like story potential. Um, it looks like Stinian might be playing a bit of a role, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm very, very excited for the story. I'm very, very excited for um, uh, the aesthetic and the level design because we know it's going to be much more varied than it was in Alexander. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, the sky's the limit, basically, in terms of what they can do uh, visually. In terms of difficulty, I mean, all the interviews that Yoshida's had recently said he was really, really happy with the difficulty of the creator Savage. Yeah. And that, that is going to be their sort of uh, uh, the, the the point that they kind of aim at for Savage content. So, so I'm expecting it to be a similar difficulty to create a Savage. In which is good, which is good. Like it's not it's not crazy, crazy difficult. I think Creator Savage had a much higher uh, clear rate than uh, any of the other raid tiers. Yeah, you, you don't say. Yeah, like way, way higher um for a whole bunch of reasons so it's more it's more approachable um i think that most of the hardcore community was still like quite happy with it um and they're also going to be getting you know this super savage or ultra savage or whatever the fuck it is um to to compensate do you think there will be an actual you know different difficulty curve difficulty progression with they this fucking better be because they promised one <laughs> yeah they said that so. the first Omega should be the easiest, the second one should be mm -hmm. a little bit harder, and then the third one mm -hmm. should be yeah. the climax. I agree mm -hmm. it'll be easy. Um, there will be slight difficulty because of... Mm, we have a month. Mm -hmm. But even still, I think it'll suffer the same... A little bit of the same fate that Gordius did in the fact of um, people, you know, mastering their jobs. Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. Absolutely, and, and but the thing is, Gordius was like really, really well geared towards, um, uh, I guess, enabling people or, or giving people the tools to sort of master their job. I mean, look at look at. Apps, did, like, I don't know apps. that it. I don't know that it gave the tools. It gave them all, right. all. but it god, but goddamn demand that you find them. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I mean. Like like Faust, Faust was a striking dummy. Faust was like, hey, do you know your job? Uh, do you know your job well enough to to get in here? Uh, if not, then come back when you do. Um, and I think it was really effective. And I think that raid tier in general was really, really effective uh, for doing that. Um, I know I know that it's controversial, but A3S is still my favorite fight in all of Heaven's World. I think it's I not that shit. I love it too, think, but there's something else I'm thinking of when you say that. I think... It was phenomenal. And I don't want there to be something like A3S in Delta, um, but I do hope that there is a, a clear difficulty curve like through the fights and then through mm -hmm. the tiers subsequently. So do you think it'll... Do you think um, Savage will have the same effect of Gordius at kind of weeding out things? I hope so, but but less less severe. Okay. Like I want it to be more approachable than Gordius, but I also want it to do like a similar thing in that it does you know force you to sort of pick up your game a little bit. Okay. Okay. So you brought up A three mm -hmm. Savage. I would like to ask mm -hmm. you at this: Are you aware of the S rank hunt in the locks? Oh, is it another Pepsi Man? So, not only is it another Pepsi Man, do you know what his name is? Is it Pepsi Man? Salt and Light. <laughs> <laughs> it's salt is in the name. Yeah. God yeah. damn it, Koji. <laughs> now, fucking like literally, he's the embodiment of the all the emotions. The salt is from what mm -hmm. he caused, and the light was for the people who beat him. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, it's a is it the same model? Yes. Guys outstanding. With, with, the, it, with the same ass. Does it do similar mechanics? Yes. So he tries to hold them. 
not all the same way. Let's just say if you're not a tank and he cleaves you at our item level, you're going to die. <laughs> yes. All the S ranks, honestly, murder. Yeah. Like, even at, like, I was like, oh, I'm like the item level. This isn't going to hurt. Oh. Oh. Yeah. The S ranks oh. hurt, man. I mean, the B ranks at, at 290 are, are kind of challenging to solo. Yeah. Uh, the A ranks. Good lord. Yeah, no, A ranks are going to fuck you in the ass. I ran into yeah. an A rank as a samurai and I got hit for 6,000. I was like, all right, I shouldn't have done that. And then he and then he cleaved me for 25,000. I was like, all right, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it's like that. And I yeah. killed that same A rank at level 62 with like everyone waiting to get into cold steel. I ran into a similar issue in in the peaks where I I think it was there was an A rank right at the the next main story quest. Then I saw him later. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, he's only maybe roughly around a few levels above me. Let me just poke him a little. And then like I just knocked the fuck out. <laughs> it took uh, like five hits. They also I... have a a wider they also leash a lot farther. Mm -hmm. So you better get out real fast because they they you don't have more than like six seconds if you're not a tank to get out of there. Dang, dude. Yeah. Um on top of that, so we brought up that there's going to be a new Aquapolis in four weeks. I, I don't remember the name. It's not just called the Aquapolis. It's got, like, a pretty long name. It's, like, the ruins of something something. I don't know. Well, I don't think it's going to be um, – oh, hang on. I just disconnected my <laughs> – um, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be Belladine stuff again, is it? I, there's nothing to tell us what it will or what it won't be. I mean, you could, well, pro you could probably look at the naming convention and figure it out. I can't. What, what's do? Do we have the name in front the, of us? The lost can can the lost canals of uh, of something, of 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 Uzner. Of Uzner. Yeah. Um. Can, yeah. I'm I'm expecting that to maybe be in Thavner. I mean Uzner Thavner. Yeah. yeah, in Radzalhan or something. He did say that we weren't going to. Yeah, he did yeah. say we weren't gonna not write a, or not like something, but that there's gonna yeah, be something. Yeah, it's My my money is definitely on it being Thavnarian. All right, but uh, okay, how do you access how do you access the Aquapolis at this? Through a portal. Through maps, you fucking muppet. Through a magic portal. Through the maps that spawn the portal, you muppet. Yeah. 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 So there's a really interesting item that comes from our level 70 Gazelskin maps. All right, here we go. It's called a Stygian Ash. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw one, apparently one sold for 10 mil not too long ago. Please do not buy Stygian Ashes unless they end up having another use. I beg you. Sold for 10 mil? Yeah. Well, just so someone could go and do the fucking fate. Okay. So the way that the Stygian Ash works, there's, there's a new super fate called Ix it's Ixion from Final Fantasy X. And he is invincible. Like, literally, people have just timed out the fate because they didn't... Mm -hmm. they, there's nothing they could do. He's invincible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, <clears throat> the only way to damage Ixion is to use a Stygian Ash on him. From one these, person. from these, yeah, just one person. They use. Uh, there are people who have killed him now. Damage it directly. That just removes the invulnerability, right? Yes. Okay. How do we feel about the super fate being locked behind an item that comes from gazelle skin maps? Hits you in the nostalgia. It hits you in the nostalgia. Yeah, I think it's a fucked up mechanic. I think it's really cool. I really like it. It, it. It's a fucked up mechanic. I'd like to point out that in Final Fantasy XI, Dark Ixion was a boss, and mm -hmm. you could not fight him unless you threw a Stygian Ash at him. <laughs> so it, I, a lot of times we like to say stuff is borrowed from XI. I don't think there's ever it's ever been more true than just now. <laughs> the difference in there is that if you don't throw it at him, he runs away in XI, right? Yeah, he just runs. Here Whereas he's in this invincible. One, if you don't throw it at him, he just fucks you up. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I that's true. Someone says that you can get it from fates by from the lightning strikes. I don't know. Oh, the really? fact that it drops from gazelle skin maps, I don't know. It's it's weird to me that it would drop from gazelle skins and then also be obtainable mid fate. I also find it hard to believe that so many servers would not figure that out at some point in the middle of the fate. Mm -hmm. mm. Like no one looks in their inventory and goes, "What's this?" Mm. And even then, I guess even then you might think like, "Why would they give me this?" 
Yeah, that's true. And then someone who played Final Fantasy XI is just like, I have an idea. <laughs> or maybe they just read the flavor text of the item. <laughs> I think, yeah. The lightning strike sounds more like a troll. It's like, yo, you can get one if you stand on the lightning strikes, but it only happens sometimes. So just keep resting. <laughs> yeah, everyone here, go do that. Although we thought that throwing yourself off cliffs to, to spawn S ranks was people trolling as well. Yeah, and that was ended up being true. So And just and also don't forget, straight up dying yeah. is another one. Yes. <laughs> Summoning minions, flying around with a behemoth air. Yep. Yeah. These are real, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I don't know, compared to the the Fox Fate which is the other one, the other super fate, which literally is a joke and is kind of annoying to track and see if it spawns. Um, what do you mean it's literally a joke? It dies in like... You know how Odin, with every, with everyone in the server there, he kind of lives for a while? Yeah. This yeah. Does not live for a while. This one falls over in about a minute. So, if That's ever... Like, so, I mean, unless people go there, it'll be harder, obviously, but, I mean... Mm -hmm. It's nothing. So it's not scaling to the number of people that are there like Odin does. Yeah. And it's also just really annoying to spawn. And then you have to track it in three hmm. different instances because of the way oh, the gross. thing works right now because you're trying to get it at least once. What do you get yeah. out of it? Uh, there's like a bunch of glamour, like fox ears and, and a table. Oh, that's and, where the fox ears are coming from. Yeah, and like a tabletop okay. item and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty obnoxious. It's very bad, basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I like the idea of Ixion, but as time winds on, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. It well, people are just going to do it like if they happen to have a Stiggy and an Ash. They're like, oh, well, yeah. All right, anybody got, anybody got a Stiggy and Ash? Anybody? <laughs> no? I'm going to leave no, now. All right. Okay, yeah. next time. Yeah. Um, so the removal of that requirement in four point, let's say two. Four point, five point oh. That's when they'll get in rid of that requirement. Four point oh one. Uh, yeah. And then eventually people are going to run maps like fucking crazy also. So people might just buy one off the boards if they see Yeah, they should end up being pretty cheap. We'll see. Uh, does Ixion actually drop a mount? I remember people saying it does. Like, does it drop Ixion as a mount? I don't, I don't actually know what Ixion's fate gives you. Like, I know it gives you two of the no tokens, but do you, it. like, do you need ten tokens to get a mount? I don't, I don't know. I don't if you know. can't get an Ixion mount within the next couple of patches. Yeah, and so it does. You can get the mount. Oh, you can. It drops the tokens. You need, like, twelve tokens. Let's make to it clear. It is, it is an Ixion mount, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Two horns, you need 12. So good. They're trying to keep that shit in demand. <laughs> trying to keep that fate in demand. Just make them do it six times. I'll, I'll do the shit out of that fate for, for that amount. Holy crap. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I might, I might, I might consider. I Before might, it doesn't fly. Especially while there's three instances that it can spawn in. Yeah. Get to it. Because you're going to want that. Yeah. Um, okay. So is there any other major point we need to hit in the not spoiler episode uh i don't think so no one's such gathering or crafting i'm assuming i mean other than maps and the people who got ahead because of the hold cold steel thing i mean it's not that it's changed much you have the underwater no, gathering it is, there's just a bunch of new yeah, items but never, I mean, other than like the spear fishing and that's what i was about to ask because we really didn't talk about uh swimming in general and mm -hmm. you know because it's swimming, it, Sly. It's... What, what do you want to say so, about okay, swimming? You know, want to know, okay, so let, you want to hear about swimming, Sly? Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so nice. you can mount underwater, you can mount in the air, and when you fly from the air into the water, you stay mounted. But if you're on the fucking surface, and then you dive, you have to remount again. And It aggravates me to no end that you have this easy transition when you're on the mount between the two, mm -hmm. but before you have flying... They, they they couldn't just give me like a boat or something like while I'm up top like I don't know it's just that transition bothers me from like well, you, don't, you don't like the fact that you can't like swim on the surface of the water with your mouth is that it yeah it doesn't bother me it bothers no. it bothers the hell out of me well it sounds like your problem <laughs> it is my problem 
And um, is it just me or do the uh, actual, you know, areas underwater kind of feel empty? I knew that was coming. Yeah. Well, there is a bunch of negative space, and like I was, I was wondering about that maybe being a problem because obviously you know, there's no fire now, there's no mobs down there, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like the Ruby Sea in particular, you're sort of traveling through a lot of negative space, but it's so nice that it doesn't bother me, and I don't think it's gonna get old. I'll, I'll give you an example, like in in terms of the Ruby Sea, mm-hmm. getting to Shisui for the first yeah, time. Yeah, going down that trench. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're only ever going to do that once that's i mean but then they created all that space for me to just do it once yeah that's what i'm saying it's a lot of it's a lot of surface area to cover for me to never go down there again yeah that's true that's true i just i just think it's really nice to sort of wander around explore. i mean there's a there's a whole bunch of negative space in the sea of clouds which you never go to and that feels more like negative space than the ruby sea does to me but they, so we just replaced one negative negative space with another. Yeah, but I Basically. feel like the Ruby C ones are like much nicer and more satisfying to sort of drift around in. Mm-hmm. Uh, d- I don't know. I think the Ruby C is great, mm-hmm. but um, unless their first time through, you forgot to do a quest and then you left the, one of the islands, then it right. sucks. <laughs> You're like, all right, I'll just go talk to this uh, main story. NPC, and then I'll go do this. Qu- I'm halfway across the fucking room. I'm a <laughs> oh no! Um, I just yeah, swimming has some sightseeing logs down there. By the way, mm-hmm. I found one. Yeah. I'm gonna assume yeah. there's a, there's more than one across all the swimming areas. Yeah, there's but the other thing logs is gathering. There's um, there's no, wait, there's no, no, that wouldn't make sense. I was gonna say there's no uh, uh treasure or anything down there. No, not yet. Mm-hmm. Not yet. There's no blitz ball down there either. Not yet. Thank God. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I set it up perfectly. All right. Um, where was uh, where was the other thing? Um, I guess one of my other things is the way swimming's used across the main scenario. Mm-hmm. You know how many times I've I was like, where the fuck? How the? F-? And then you just find a pool and you go. Oh yeah. No. Yep. Yeah. Shit. Does it I'm, really bother you that much? It it really is. When okay, what bothers me is sometimes you're standing on top of the quest marker, mm-hmm. and you're there's nothing there, mm-hmm. and you're like, what the? F-? There's got to be a cave somewhere. And then again, it hits you. You and it find doesn't occur to you. And you find my general rule of thumb is if you can't find it, it's underwater. Now, yeah. like so many times, I'm just like, you know, in Volker's Reach. The first mm-hmm. time I got there, I kept going around the water because of the way I'm <laughs> broke. Yeah, yeah, because you program. I'm programmed to stay yeah, away no from it. So like, that's oh, like another one of those things that will just like take a couple of days or a couple of weeks to get used to, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> I've seen like uh, so many quests, especially in like, I think the fourth zone you visit. Mm-hmm. It's... It, what Yank show? Yeah. It gets what, having a, having because a again, you're just like, how the fuck do I get over? It? Of course. Of course. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, well, the thing is, if you'd been reading the dialogue, then you would have noticed that they yeah. were they telling t- you. I know they do tell you. They even point yeah. you. The NPCs run in its direction. That's another yeah. thing. NPCs always run in the direction of where yeah. the pools are. Yeah. So as long as you yeah. notice that. You know how many times I've seen them run in a direction and it's the same direction as the marker? And I just don't Mm -hmm. think... I'm just not thinking about swimming because I have never had to think about it for four years. (laughs) It does feel better in the locks, though. I'll I'll, I'll admit. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's one place I can can forgive it. Forgive the whole empty feeling because it doesn't feel empty. It actually feels a lot more spacious than the land for the most part what's going on in the locks there by the way sly is that part of the old city that's underwater is that part of the city or is that something else are you asking from a lore perspective yeah i don't i have no idea i know you don't so i didn't fucking ask you (laughs) how about you don't discuss it yet then at this okay okay fine all right all right all right never mind I have to do this with two different cameras because there you go. I'm just saying. 
shut up. So that's all we got for swimming. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tough. So as long, I'm just glad I'm not fighting down there. Even as much as fighting would make it feel less empty, I just don't want to fucking fight underwater. It, it would. It oh, would yeah. If as as soon as you give me the, uh, the as soon as I can fight underwater, you might as well just let me fight in, in the air because it's the it would be the fucking same thing because they literally mm-hmm. control the same minus the little you know, <coughs> circle as you approach the surface. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad for that, and it would have been such a waste of resources as well for such a gimmicky thing. Yeah, although I don't mind it. I wouldn't mind a vertical fight like that on occasion. It's just I don't want it to become super normal. Mm-hmm. We just need to wait for... Yeah, but for... the thing is, why, why would you invest the resources unless it is something that's going to be super normal? I don't know. I'll ask out about all of swimming and diving at this point because there's nothing down there. <laughs> but that's just that's just like a set of animations. There's nothing like to there's that. There's a lot really. of shit down. There's a lot of things they had to put in the meticulously Oh, I know, I know, I know. But, but yeah. in terms of like creating assets and animations and stuff like that, like it's nowhere near... Uh, what they would have to do for underwater I, combat. I like the chat yeah. suggesting they should put Emerald Weapon down there. <laughs> you can't even find him. He just that, murders you that, if he finds that, you. Would it be Ruby Weapon? No, Ruby Weapon's the sand. Considering it's yeah. the Ruby Sea. God damn it. No. no. I'm being serious. I'm being serious. No. Like, no. You know, I think there'd, there'd be a Ruby Weapon down there somewhere. It would be. All right. Okay. Oh, my bad. Stop, stop giving me that look. I'm that's I said serious. you I, you get one and now that's two mm. in this show. That's two. All right. right. That's Everyone gets two. That's way more than two. Yeah. Yeah, you got a point. Uh okay. Is there any is there anything else? Sly, swimming and diving was your idea. Is there anything else? Have y'all died on water? No, sh- we had to. <laughs> oh, died. So I tried to die. Um yeah. It didn't work. Wow. I couldn't get it to happen. So mm. the funny thing is in the second dungeon in Violet Tide, there is a small portion of water. And so you try, if you mm. try pulling the mob to the water, it leashes. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? I don't know if you can run all the way up and grab a different, because this mob leashes no matter what. If you run past him far enough, he leashes too. I wonder mm-hmm. if I can run. I wonder if the other mobs have a leash range that's similar, like, like it's designed to stop in this like this radius that like prevents you from bringing it back to the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that some someone made a point the other day in the Ruby Sea, which I thought was fucking hilarious, is that they ran into the water to escape from a shark. <laughs> <laughs> the sharks above land are yeah. a bigger threat than the actual sharks you can yeah. swim underwater yeah. with. Yeah, I was like, yep. Yeah. All right, the shark's like sees you going in the water. It's like, oh no, 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 I'm not about that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. It's a land shark, bro. <laughs> don't you don't? Did you just assume what kind of shark it is? Yeah, I guess I did. Yeah, you must Jeez. have. How yeah. about that? Well, at some point, I hope someone dies in the water. Don't take That's that sentence terrible. out of context. That is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take that out of context. And uh, you know what? I'll say this. I hope we can. I hope that large houses can get swimming pools. <laughs> yeah. There's a plot we were looking at, and it does have a hot spring behind it. Yeah, they got hot springs, but a couple of the plots do have hot springs behind them, which is really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And someone did ask for for swimming pools, and Yoshida was like, "Huh, yeah, all right." And then you're literally you're gonna log in. And there's just going to be a Lollafell with the Play Dead emote in the water. Yeah, at the, at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a Lollafell, nobody else. Even though, <laughs> even though you know, the potatoes. You know, it's mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, right. Beautiful. On that note, I think we've covered everything from Early Access. Mm-hmm. Uh, chat mm-hmm. very often asks us to talk about job balance. When he's played Dragoon, I've played Monk, you've played Dragoon. Yeah. You can't really do that like before Omega anyway. I mean, you can mathematically. People are mathematically, you can, but it's it doesn't really mean anything like, on like, paper. Like for example, ninja, actually the most OP thing. Paladin, mm-hmm. pretty fucking OP. Mm-hmm. You know, scholar, everyone fucking hates it now. Yeah. There, there's again, a, there's a few generalizations. Paper, it doesn't mean anything until we until we get into red. No, it doesn't. But. People wanted us to talk. I just don't know that we like we're not experienced. We're not really qualified. At the yeah, moment. we're not qualified. Yeah. And if we fucking yeah. dumb for us to try and do it. Sly, do you have? Some, like do you want to talk to... about job balance, Sly? No. <laughs> no. 
off. It's like people trying to ask me about like Arthur and Law and stuff at the moment. I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Give me a couple of weeks, Jesus. What makes you think? You think that I got like copies of the script like months beforehand because I didn't. No, you are at this Jesus. You know the lore before the lore actually hits the fucking game. Haven't you gotten that notice? At this. Oh, yeah. All right. right. I want you to I want you to tell me this just with your lore knowledge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who will be the last mm -hmm. boss of the interdimensional rift? I know I know it's one? asking a lot, but I I I think yeah. you might be able to like I think you might have the insight. You, well, you right think now? it's gonna be you think it's gonna be X Death. Well, or Enduel. If not, I think they'll appear in there. I have, I have no it's idea. It's going to be Omega. Like, we're not fucking stupid. It's going to be Omega. Yeah, it's going to be Omega. <laughs> I think it's probably going to be Omega. But in terms of, like, twists and stuff, I've, I have no idea what's going to happen in the interdimensional rift. I, I expect to see uh, Papalimo in there um, doing a kind of Louis Soi, like, closure kind of thing. Agreed. Uh, maybe Ilbert. Maybe. Mm. But I haven't really put much thought into Omega, to be honest. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully it delivers. Sly, you look like you're thinking before we wrap up. Yeah, when you said Ilbert, I'd, I said Pop Wingo, yes, Ilbert, no. Nah, but now that, now that you think about it, uh, I remember the um, final steps of fate. Yeah, they might go that route. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, they brought, like I said, brought back Kosh Font and Iceheart when nobody saw that coming. So I would see mm -hmm. this one coming at the very least. Mm -hmm. hmm. Nero is going to be the last boss. That's all that matters. And he's going to be dead, finally. We'll be done with him, all right? You reckon, we're gonna, you reckon Nero's finally going to die? Yeah, this motherfucker, is just his lease on life has gone on too long. <laughs> he's seriously played with death way too many times at this point. Uh, and this that's is true. That's a good point. He is going down. All right, so uh, that's a wrap for this show. Uh, yes, sir. So next week's show... Is uh is still kind of a toss up. We'll probably talk more specifically about certain aspects of it. I consider doing the spoiler cast in just one week because in two mm -hmm. weeks we'll have Omega Normal to talk about. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. Omega Normal generally won't take up a whole show because we'll get in. We'll we'll talk about the four bosses briefly. We can't talk about the lore the day of Omega. We're talk about the story that it comes. Yeah. 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 So. Mm -hmm. Um, the spoiler cast will be in two weeks, Ethis. I mm -hmm. would like you to especially to be aware of that. You're Next making me week, hold my breath for two weeks, man. What happened? You're making me hold my breath for two weeks, man. Yeah. It's going to take him that long to watch the cutscenes. No, Thursday. Yeah, yeah, you say that. Yeah. No, that's what, that's what it did with yeah, Evan's we'll word. See. I did it like as... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh -huh. We'll see. <laughs> uh, next week is still a toss-up, but the week after the spoiler cast is Bully of the Realm. Woo! Where, oh, it uh, is? Yes. So we, okay. so Sly and I will have right. Zeno on that episode. And then oh. we'll be Omega Savage Day. Ooh. Which we'll have some hopeful first impressions of. Hopeful? Hopeful. Well, I mean, like, we won't, obviously we won't have seen all of Savage at that point. So we can, well, <laughs> I say <laughs> that, but. <laughs> world I mean, first before have... world first in under 15 hours by somebody who the fuck knows yeah. right yeah mm -hmm. yeah and everyone's like Zeno, Zeno's gonna quit warrior listen it doesn't mean you bully any less alright that just means that you're <laughs> not unchained as much is he, is, he gonna, is he gonna rename his show to Sword Oath I don't <laughs> Requie Requiescat or whatever it's uh... called Holy Spirit I don't no, think you should name a show Holy Spirit. I think that's a bad idea. Oh, okay. No, still bully, it's still we're still calling it Bully of the Realm. It doesn't it doesn't matter. You can bully regardless of job, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. <laughs> okay. So and uh, okay, so those are just the plan. Next week is still all up in the air and we'll be sure to give updates about that. Whatever it is out this, you're free to join us if you want, but I'm not gonna make you since you have to be on two weeks from now as well. Oathbreaker, sure, there you go. Oathbreaker. I like it. There we go. There you go. That's hmm. a good name. Um, okay, so let's wrap up, uh, and then I can get back to being tired as hell. See, I made it through the show with the tequila, fine. You did it! I honestly proud of you, dude. didn't feel it all that much. I don't know if that means I'm an alcoholic. You only have I think one shot all the way through. What happened, Sly? You only have one shot or two. We had two back-to-back, -back and they're 150 proof each, so. It was, uh, you had two three. shots. Yeah. The second one was only... even more full than the first one, so I was worried. I was worried, guys. 
Oh, and for anyone who's watching live, this doesn't matter on YouTube, don't forget there's maintenance night at 11 p.m. until 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So uh, that's, what time is it now? That's in just yeah. under four hours. Or just over yeah, four, four hours. hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind if you have plans to play tonight, especially late into the morning. But, uh, you know, that's pretty late. So just go to sleep. Anyway. Uh, so, Ethis, why don't you tell them where they can find you at and what some of your plans might be video-wise, content creation-wise. Um, you can find me on youtube.com slash ethos asha i think the first thing i'm going to be doing content wise over the next couple of weeks is i'm going to be going through all of the, the leveling dungeons and doing world tours and stuff like that um it's going to be a couple of weeks for me to like digest all of the new like author lore and stuff like that before i start doing content on that but you can expect content on that of course and on everything else story and lore related to stormblood uh, you can catch me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Asher, where I stream five nights a week. I'll be streaming, for those of you live at the moment, I'll be streaming, yeah, I'll be live in about an hour from now, and I'll be streaming until um, uh, until the servers go down. So there's that. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, at Ethis, FFXIV. What about you, Sly? You can find me at twitch.tv slash Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox. You can find me on Instagram at Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox 07. You can find me on the Ubtubs uh, at the Velvet Room. Uh, you can find me, uh, I think that's pretty much it, everywhere. Yeah. 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 You can find me everywhere, except Grinder, of course. <sighs> that's your thing every week now, right? And I think, honestly, week? at this point, I, I, I think you have one. So do you, Sly, I'm man. Sure. Get out there. I'm pretty sure. Slay. Thanks. Really, just say Slay. <laughs> if anyone wants to be Slice Butt Boy, he is looking. Yeah, it's not going to be ashamed of dude. No, no, no. According to Ethos, I will let anyone give me a handy. That's true. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> we'll call you Slay, aka Gray Fox. All right. <laughs> <laughs> New nickname right there. Yes! Oh, <laughs> oh my god, he's still going. Oh, it's sad. He's still oh going. Oh my god. I love having uh, nicknames. Yeah, yeah, Happy, where can, where can they find you? Just, just go ahead. <laughs> All right. Mr. Happy127, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. Also, not Grinder. <laughs> Since he brought it up, I will also bring it up. Um, it's been a really crazy week this last week. We've had the stream going live for 20. It's still right now. It's still part of that. We had the stream almost consistently live 24-7. We had a few like technical hiccups, internet drops, or uh, OBS having issues. But it's been crazy because uh, Tequila Shots, one of our moderators, first time streaming, and he's been doing really well. Mel's been taking over, and she's been doing really well. Uh, she's been gathering and talking shit about me. Uh, but, I mean, that does well, right? <laughs> That's all you really need to do. And uh, it's been insane. So now that the 24-7 the is going to be winding down soon, uh, in a sense, it's not actually going for 7 because early access is over. It's just I didn't want to say 27 or 24-4. It doesn't sound as cool, pretty much. That being said, it's been an excellent event. Now that it's coming to an end, uh, I can actually get real guides out, not, hey, I'm running through this dungeon talking about it and going, uh, because I'm trying to fucking learn how to play Monk at level 60-whatever. And what I learn all the bosses and shit. So please look forward to it. I uh, I know I do. It's gonna be a busy next four weeks until Omega Savage because it's gonna be video, video, Yay. video, 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 yeah. video, video. So anyway, thank you all for enjoying the hell out of this twenty four seven stream, and uh, look forward to Stormblood because it's got it for the next two fucking years. So. Hopefully 4.1 stuff, the new stuff is great. Hopefully the brand new content 4.2 is great. Hopefully Eureka is less shitty than the other relics. I'm not going to say great because it's still relic weapons, but maybe it'll be great and I'm wrong. Or it'll be diadem, who the hell knows. Um, and uh, yeah, we got, uh, we got a lot going on. So looking forward to it. On that note, though, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to wrap up this show and we're going to continue the stream for a little while longer. Uh, and then I think I might shut down the 24-7 tonight because with maintenance, I don't know. I feel like it's, yeah. it's fate. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think any of us wants to just sit there for four hours. You think it's a sign? I think it's a sign. I think it's a sign, happy, get off, and, and go start <laughs> go making guides. 
<laughs> I've been sleeping seven to eight hours <laughs> actually. Good, this this mm. this entire set of I think there's only one night where I only slept for five hours. Every and other then, night's huh? been seven to eight hours. It's been it's been it's reliably good. good. So uh, it's been fantastic. Um, but anyway, guys, we are gonna wrap up probably a short post show so these two gentlemen can get back to their time. By the way, uh, Sly Primal's fucked right now. It's ninety k's across the board. Just so you know. Uh, don't go into the duty finder you're fucked i'm just letting you know if you go into the duty finder like an instant, you're, you're gonna you're gonna disconnect i'm just letting you know at this is probably fine because you know tonberry i mean right now it's fine yeah there you go okay and uh ladies and gentlemen we will see you next week so until then take care bye Enjoy the game. hopefully you got your collector's editions if you did slay the fucks god damn it happy what the fuck <laughs>